Rebels with the cause. And we are live. What is going on, everybody? Brian, Amy is in the house. Um, What's up, guys? What is up, good people? Let me move Amy a little bit here right. to the side. Uh oh, it was, Jesus Got Lord! It's been <laughs> it's been like two seconds. It was, uh, it was a second and a half. We're yeah. We'll uh, let folks uh, start t uh, connecting. Uh, feel free to tag, share, wherever you may be seeing us right now. Uh, we are live. My name is David Pineda, DP, uh, disabled army veteran, and I'll be hanging out with these amazing folks today. We have amazing things happening. Uh, I got Brian, I have Amy. I'll let them say hello, and then we'll rock and roll. Ladies first. Okay. My name is Amy. I'm a U.S. Air Force veteran of 11 years. I was in dental and um, have three kids in Colorado Springs. Happy to be here. I uh, work on DP's team for DP and um, veteran coach and happy to be here with hanging out with you guys. Awesome. Glad to have you here uh, for another great Friday Night Live. Uh, we got yes. Brian on the road. What's up, brother? Yep. What's yeah. up? Yep. I'm, uh, parents, I'm off right? location, off location. So. <laughs> uh, off location, off location. How are your parents? Yeah. So. Well, they're they're at their house because their their house is like a um, the anti internet space. So you go and, and it takes internet back from you. That's how bad the internet is oh. there. So. Oh, I had to go off location to be able to connect and 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 hopefully, you know, stream some video. It's it's hard enough pulling up a, a just a basic web page with their. Um, are you familiar with uh, like twelve or twenty four K bod modems? Have you ever heard of no. those? That's what. It's no. probably probably a reason why. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know for a fact she has not, but yes. <laughs> That's that's kind of what it's like <laughs> without the noise. Mm -mm -mm. So where are you? Shawnee, You're Oklahoma. Shawnee. Yeah. Oh, I'm at the church building. Oh, look at you. Wow. You're amazing. Oh, indeed. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Let me go ahead and uh, pin this here. Uh, so we have a pretty interesting uh, talking points. We have Maria tuning in with us shortly. Uh, we're going to be talking about the silent auction and kind of some of the amazing things they're doing on that side of the house. Um, I'm not wearing a hat. If those are following on Instagram, that was actually one of today's uh, fun points. Uh, I do have hair. It has been brought up. Uh, the question has come up whether or not I have hair or not since I'm always wearing a hat. Uh, but I do have hair, uh, but I also do have some new hats though. So there's that part. Look at that bad boy. Take a look Jones. at that. Take a look at that. I got. I'm trying oh, to get wow. it. I'm trying to get it so you see the texture on that sucker. Yes. Bell and Ron is have get a hat just like that. Funny you should ask me, Brian. <laughs> what? I am yes. of great envy and jealous. Uh, we, we, we the same we look, look at where, 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 oh, where my a find these amazing things. Uh, the, actually, there are over at uh, veteransnetwork.club at our swag shop. Um, I actually even have a sample that's not on our side, but the things they can do is amazing uh, on Bell's side of the house. Uh, Joe, do you have the little earrings uh, that she made for you? Um, I, need, I need to call in support from the boss here. Um, but the things that they can do is amazing. Uh, I'll show you some of the actual earrings that they got made uh, for our... Um, actually, give me the bag. I'll show the bag, which is pretty cool. So they got some tote bags uh, that they made for us. You won't see, be able to see the green because the green is... Okay. Uh, the green is going to not show because of the uh, uh, green screen, but look at that bad boy. Yeah, they've done an nice. incredible work there. Yeah, it's, it's, been, nice. it's been pretty amazing. And then so they made they made these earrings as well. But we better I do it this way. There you go. Again, the black is really the green. But yeah, so you know, pretty cool stuff they can smaller. do on that side of the house, which has been amazing. Um, but yeah, veteransnetwork.club is where you'll be able to find uh, some of the amazing things that we have. But specifically, 
I actually have a few. So look at that. Got a black hat. Belt, I did, I, they all did themselves. Got a black one. Uh, some folks might like a blue one. Uh, we got a tan one. Got a little, wow. gray, act, little gray action one here. Uh, I'm partial to the uh, this kind of look. It's like some folks like the, you know, like little stretch one fit type of things, but I like these little like ones like this. So, you know, just uh, adding some more stuff there. Now they're all one size fit all, right? Correct. Right, so one size fits all, so they stretch and they're like, pretty good material as well. So uh, some pretty good what things if you have a big there. Head? I have a big head. Well, you're gonna have to stretch it out. <laughs> Amy, uh, Amy, I, I would be the test. If it can fit on my noggin, it can fit on anybody's. Um, so we have a few folks here in attendance checking it out. You might remember this, folks. I might be able to share a few things. I don't know if you're still watching or not, but uh, you may know uh, my brother from another mother. Uh, literally just got a call with him, uh, the Marine Corps rapper. Uh, the Marine rapper, you guys okay. saw him with us the other day, TMR. It was a great session a few weeks ago. If you guys haven't seen it, go back and check it out. Uh, but he is saying hello and popping in, so definitely showing some love. Uh, I'll be able to share maybe some cool things that we were talking about, but I can't tell too much. Uh, right. Well, can but, I tell something? Oh, I don't know. Oh. I, I, do, I, do have to, I do have to apologize to Ray or to TMR. Uh, I have been wearing his track out, so he might need to replace <laughs> <Yes>. it. <laughs> so, yeah. so, T TMR, we need uh, to know, is there a limit on how many times Brian can spin uh, the track because he, he's wearing it out. He, he might need to go buy another download. Yes, my kids know uh, know all the words to it now. Awesome. Uh, we got Frank in the house. Frank, what's up? But can I say something about TMR? Oh, well, okay. Well, let, let, let me just pop up some folks real quick just to say to hate oh, them. So we got Eric in the house. Uh, you know her as the better part of the Melendez family. Uh, we got oh, Jesse. They are out to dinner tuning in. Apparently, because look, they're right next to each other, <laughs> and they're and they're texting. <laughs> um, let's see. We got that. Um, you saw the comment that uh, TMR put up, so he's saying hello. Uh, Frank says I need one of those hats, so we got to make sure that we get that link to him. Uh, that's over at the swag shop. We'll jump there in a second. I'll show you guys where it's at. So we're adding those in there. Um, we got Manuel in the house. Um, Good evening, uh, my brother and sister. Retired from Ohio. Appreciate you. Uh, we, this just in, right off of the comment section. TMR says, "Play it as much as you want, Brian. There is no infraction on that at all." Um, oh, good. We have some pretty Not cool things coming as well. So you guys are gonna love uh, what's yeah. coming. Uh, all right, now over to Amy. You can go ahead. Okay, so I've everybody knows that I'm obsessed with my microphone and karaoke. And if you guys tuned in, I think it was last week we talked about it and we suggested that we reach out to TMR and see if he'd be willing to support Veteran Idol if he's one of the judges. So since then, I said he would do that and support us. So I'm so excited about that because it's something that I've been talking to the whole team about they think i'm kind of crazy i think but i'm super excited about it mm -hmm. um i do feel like i should be a judge because oh no oh no I, I think i should be a judge because i love it so much and i always show up with my microphone this is true she she wants to be the paula abdul from season one um okay. we got we got we got sam in the house sam in the house says i love karaoke Yes. Uh, so there's that part. Uh, we got Ginger uh, and David. You guys may know them from the Vepreneur Tribe. Uh, so, we, so we're streaming right now to Facebook. We're in the Vepreneur Tribe. Uh, we're on YouTube as well and a few different places. So um, if you're watching us, say hello. Um, the private groups, though, they show up like this. So that's why I have to kind of look to see who it is because of the privacy thing. Um, but on the YouTube side of the house, you'll see the names pop up and so forth. Um, I don't know yes. if I should... I'm, I'm, I'm representing the red uh, for TMR, but I, I definitely can't That's, pull off the... I think he's mark. saying all facts to me. I don't know if that that, that comment was not to you. Oh, I Lord. Think, yeah, I think it was. Um, uh -oh. So it's, it's funny when you know someone because you want to call them different names, but I don't know how I feel about this comment. It just came up. Yes! Yes! 
I think I think you honestly have completely made Amy's day now. Yes, yes. So you have been validated. Like, where's the stamp of approval? Let me screenshot that. Really Amy's done is, now. Are you are you literally gonna screenshot this? Yes. <laughs> oh my. So th that right there probably over. Oh, well, guys, it's been real. Thank you for showing up. Uh, yep. We're good here. There's not much more to talk about. Amy's day has been made. Um, yes. All the work that no one has ever seen behind the scene has come to fruition today. <laughs> and I yeah. just like to. I'm, I'm gonna just be like to add this. Hype, hype girl. I'm telling you, and you know he's look at that. You're getting support all the way. All facts is to Amy. There you go. So <laughs> look. You see that? Look, I'm, talk yes. about the stamp. Yes. Look at that. That's the yes. stamp right there. That is the stamp of approval. So, say no more. Say no more. you know, I, I literally um, s had a conversation with TMR right before going live. We talked earlier for a little bit today. And, you know, when we went live last time, it's funny. People don't realize that was actually the second time in life we had talked to each other. Well, third time. The first time was a quick call to set up. Then we had the clubhouse interview, and then the first time we had seen each other and talked was on that Friday Night Live. Um, and folks would have thought we sat there and had a you know a pre plan and talked and stuff, but you know we flowed. We were able to to to, to link up and had similar vibes and our ideas and what we're doing is very aligned with each other. Uh, so funny enough. To Amy's point of reaching out, uh, you know, he hit me up like, hey, I have some ideas and, you know, some things I think we could do together. So we're talking with some collaborations uh, and to be able to bring because I tell you what, people were so impressed and shocked with the amount of of veteran musicians that are in this space that it, I think took people by surprise. And the fact of the matter is there are many veterans who are in the industry. Uh, there are many who want to potentially go into the industry. And like anything else, it just helps to be able to relate to someone and see, okay, well, if TMR can do it, then I can do it, right? Or he has the ability to help me navigate some of this. Uh, that's a that's a skill set. And to be able to put more substance than just the, the the art because i think that's what really resounded with people it was like hey look i'm not really a fan of this music or this genre but understanding you as the artist and your mission and your platform now this makes sense to me and when you have people like jerry and you got brian you got others like look i'm not really into rap at all but i love what you're doing and the message makes sense to me and it's something that like you said right i will i'll i will, I will take the liberty to say that it, it's probably refreshing to T.M. Marcus. We did talk about it for him to hear that your kids know the words to his music, and that to me is it's it's huge because it says that we're doing something. So the things that we're thinking and collaborating in, uh, you'll see him bringing some of his resources, some of his um, you know talent, some of the goodness that he is doing on his side of the house, um, and be able to share that with our network and vice versa. So uh, some fun things to come. Uh, a one-on-one -on -one is on the way. We'll have some collabs. So veteransnetwork.club our website you might see a build out with more information in there um, and some of the content they're always producing music there's a new track out now so uh, there's a lot of funky fun stuff uh, that's out there that we are looking to do so um, it's 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 amazing to be able to start aligning yourself with the right people who are on the same path um, and it's funny because literally this is exactly the, what I told them. So some folks that get this one, uh, but we, my, my point to him was, you know, I'm, I'm over here on my side and we've been doing Friday night live for those that know for a while now. Um, and you know, we're here and we built out sound off and we started with the one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and you know, building our network and just, you know, creating space for our veterans and, uh, you know, TMR has been on his side. People don't see what it's taking for him to get on the billboards and his collaboration and finding all these artists uh, has been amazing. So all that to say that it's amazing. And hey, Eric, yeah, we, we did talk about also the fundraiser as well. So that's going to be something there that we can support for sure. But being able to, co to coordinate and collaborate. And I said, you know, if you're into superheroes or not, the fact of the matter is, Think about that whole Avengers initiative, right? You know, it's great to have a Tony Stark and Iron Man. It's great to have a, a Hulk. It's great to have this and that. But if you can bring folks together, um, I think that really does something that we can do. So that's where this kind of comes in, right? Us being able to come together, bring some big names and really collaborate without having the need for egos and all the stuff that comes with other folks. Like, oh, I can't have someone so come here because no, 
we can all grow together. Um, so I'm excited for what's to come. I think it's going to be beneficial to all of our audience and the new folks coming. So there's definitely a lot of goodness to come for sure. Uh, Maria is tuning in here. Uh, but I wanted to do a quick uh, jump while Maria gets here uh, to show folks where they can find some of the information that we're talking about over at uh, veteransnetwork.club. We have a new blog out that we wanted to definitely highlight. Uh, for those that are aware, new, a new law has been passed uh, that's opened up you know, VA services and vaccinations for veteran spouses and caregivers uh, for the COVID vaccine. So regardless of where you sit on the political realm, uh, this is out there. The information is there. So we wanted to share that um, and have some links and resources available. Uh, that's one of the last blogs that we have. We had our Women's in History Month conversation uh, yesterday highlighting the amazing uh, you know women who have led in the military so that conversation was there along with their um, you know uh, the panel that we had and then we also had uh, Jen with her blog that she wrote on hacking habits and change for life change and then the agent orange uh, piece that we did so a lot of good information if you head on over to veteransnetwork.com uh, on the home page, if you scroll down, we're going to add the hats to the swag shop. So when you go down here, you'll see it added to accessories. So like I said, these just came in. We gave them the thumbs up. So a lot of good stuff is happening there. Um, so just be on the lookout for some more good, amazing things that are coming. Um, so let's go ahead and head on back over here. Uh, but I am excited. It's uh, been amazing. Um, Brian, I think there's a few other things we're going to bring up. I'm going to bring Maria in here in a second. Um, I think so. We got the COVID blog. Uh, we have the other information. Let's see. What else? Um, we, I, I know we want to congratulate um, the, the winner for the $100 swag gift card mm -hmm. uh, or... Uh, gift code and uh, <clears throat> that is Kayak Guggen um, so Kayak Guggen if you're watching this live or if you're watching this on, uh, as a re replay uh, I did post a message in your YouTube channel in the discussion thread uh, so we just need you to send us your email address and we awesome. will get you the details Awesome. Uh, let's see, Maria, I got you in the green room coming in. Uh, let me see. Can you flip your device landscape to see if it gives you the same um, setup as it has on ours? There you go. Just like that. Perfect. Awesome. Bring Maria in here. And while and you're pulling Maria up here, uh, I just wanted to, to give TMR uh, one little bit of shout out here. I, I shared his... Uh, music the patriot rapper uh, particularly in, in the galaxy uh with my grandkids and, and one of my daughters and uh oh we got cool granddad here they, they 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 first of all whenever i brought it up they said you don't like rap what are you talking <laughs> about <laughs> because the only thing that they've ever heard come out of my mouth is mm -hmm. crap <laughs> rap crap and then i was like oh wait a uh, second Gram grandpa's cool yeah. and hip now he has some friends <laughs> Well, exactly. So I, I, I shared it with them, and they're like, "Man, we really like that. That was awesome." So uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. We got Maria coming on in here. Let's go ahead and say howdy to Maria. Hey, Maria. Hi. Can hey. you hear? Yeah, we hear you. Sorry, I was having a hard time logging in from my phone for some reason. Oh, that uh, just probably need an upgrade. That's all it is. It's not operator error. Okay, good, good. It's good to see you again and have you here with us uh, today to talk a little bit about some of the amazing things on your side of the house. Um, I think we got most of the admin uh, things out of the way. I want to go to the comment section, excuse me, and bring up um, some of the um, amazing things that are happening. Uh, we're going to jump and look at Claymore Vets and talk a little bit about this silent auction thing, which I think most people have been seeing on our website and our social media as we have shared it. Uh, so there is some amazing things happening there. Um, let's go ahead and quickly do a quick shout out here. Uh, we got David Sinsu in the house. Uh, he is What's saying up, hello to everyone. What's up, man? Yeah. 
we got sense on the house we'll put them right there uh let's see not sure how we're going to get into the live chat uh you are here um rosemary rosemary said how we're going to get into live chat you are here uh we see you welcome welcome yeah welcome yeah uh oh, okay, cool. let's see let's see uh so eric brought up a good point so we have uh, a veteran nonprofit fundraiser happening so looking at you know so collaborating and supporting that there so um again this is what's cool because you know connections being made uh tmr being able to go ahead and support some of what's happening on that side of the house um new connections being made as well david Senso gets to meet tmr so this is pretty yes. cool. Um, a highlight to uh, Kayak Guggen. Uh, so we went ahead and made a point to make sure you reach out to us. You are the winner of the uh, last giveaway that we had. So that is awesome. We got Deborah in the house. Hey, Deborah. Thanks for being here with hey, us today. Um, Rosemary's like, I'm good. I'm here. Hello. Awesome. <laughs> so let's shift a little bit. So for those that don't know, uh, we had a, a, a sound off. Uh, with Maria and I, we talked a little bit about uh, a variety of different things she's doing on her space, uh, specifically in the art side. By far, the the biggest takeaway of all the awesomeness that we talked about was one line that Maria said, which was shifting the focus from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth. Um, and I think that was one of the of the many jewels that she dropped, I think was amazing to be able to f begin to change uh, the context of that. Um, and then as I started to dig a little deeper after, I realized that Maria is kind of in the business of taking things people would classify as one way and with her art change it, even down to her organization, uh, Claymore. We think Claymore minds, right? You're thinking this way to, to the enemy. And literally, it's like, no, we're actually going to sit here now and give love and art to the world. So, Maria, thank you for joining us. Please introduce yourself to those that may not know. We have an amazing uh, veteran here with us, Marine veteran, does amazing things. But I want you to definitely, you know, say hello, introduce yourself, talk a little bit about Claymore. And then we'll shift over to the silent auction side of the house because uh, this is pretty cool. Yeah. So, hi, guys. Thank you much for having me. I'm so excited. Um a little nervous because, you know, I don't know this video stuff, but it's a good thing I know all of you guys, so I feel all right. Um, yeah, so uh, I started Claymore Vets because I experienced um, healing. Well, I went I went back to school for art therapy, and then one of my required classes was Ceramics 101. And I walked into the studio, and, you know, it changed my life. Um, I've been an artist all my life since I was maybe six, but working with clay, it, I've never found a medium that is liable and so um versatile you can do everything you can mm. sculpt you can you know it, it really it's and compassion and um i found such meditative like flow when i work with it i i um i wanted to pass that to our brothers that are struggling with um you know reconnecting back to the civilian world and and then having that sense of pride again, um, that's why I, I found a Claymore vet. Uh, but as you said, Claymore is, is, is a nomenclature that more veterans pick up, right? As soon as you hear that, you're like, boom, that's that's a military thing. Um, and most of the civilian world sees us veterans as reactive and explosive and, you know, like destructive. And I want to change that paradigm because I feel that, like you said, we, we all have potential for post-traumatic growth. Um, and we can shift that mentality from the creators. Um, wow. So that's what we try to do with, um, yeah, that's a, that was a sculpture I made of like boots and I want to honor the, four, the four, uh, you know, the ones that have lost. Do you have that? Is that, that one's yours or is it? Do, did yeah. you sell it or of course? Oh. The first pair I made, uh, friends by the collection, um, the co um, network, the clinic in, in, um, in New York City. This second one is in, on my studio at, well, not my studio, at school in storage because we have, I haven't been able to get back. Into it, so, awesome. Um, you, you recognize this individual here, uh, one of our fellow brothers that should be jumping in here a little bit, Mr. Joe. 
Um, getting ready to transition from the stand-up show to this. Ready when you guys give him a couple of minutes to get set up. So he's going to be joining us shortly as well. One of the one of the artists that uh, Maria has put us in contact with. So that is awesome. So Mr. Saucy J, uh, aka Joe. Um, for you, a quick shout out here from Frank over at Crayons Ready to Eat. Um, Maria, I uh, may need to hit you up for a clay model of Lance Corporal Crunch, which is his logo that you see there hunched over. So, um, I just, I just, can, I just want to take a second and just say how amazing it is to be able to be in the space, Brian and Amy, where literally you see Eric saying, I want to do this, and, and the Marine Corps rapper says, you know, DM me, I want to do that. Or, and Maria shows some of the stuff that they've done, and Frank says, hey, I want to get something sculpted and reach out and collaborate. And it's just like, man, to be able to just see the crossroads of different, you know, veterans coming together, getting to know each other, and creating, you know, part of that community, that ecosystem, I think is just amazing. So... Um, yeah, I just, it really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it really is because for all right intents and purposes or for all rights they, that they would have the, the ability to say, hey, I'm too busy. I've got all these things going on. I mean, Maria's obviously got some fantastic work that she's doing. That's got to be keeping you busy. Um, you know, same thing with TMR and all the, the work that he's doing in this music industry. Um, but yet, and, and Frank developing a business, Eric helping nonprofits. Uh, I mean, but yet everybody's coming together to spend, you know, spend their time um, to support everybody else in, in, in the community, and it's it's uh, extremely encouraging. Yeah, and again, I, I'm just here having again for those that may have not seen it, Claymore. Uh, vets.org um, again to me this is just amazing uh, seeing what can be done um, what you guys are all doing and again changing the narrative um, I just really love the whole fact that you know we're able to actually switch what people will think here uh, to make it something new which I think is completely awesome um, so definitely wanted to highlight that and then you know I want you to talk a little bit about the um, uh, silent auction and what's happening there, uh, Maria. So talk to me a little bit about this amazing thing over here. Man, I am so excited about this. You know, I when I started, you know, talking to my board about this, they were like, okay, let's ha make it happen, right? And I was like, okay, I got it. I'm gonna send it, you know, I'm gonna get all these artists. And I mean, I, I've, I've created a, an art show before. So I, I have a good uh, pool of veteran artists, but I've only known two from here, and everyone else was new to me. So it was so exciting to see, you know, other other people um, jump aboard. And I love how eclectic it is, you know, because they all have different styles, they all have different mediums, they all have different, you know, um, art styles, um, and everyone was very like from the beginning, like yes, let's do this, you know, this is a great. Uh, a cause to be part of and um yeah we pulled this together like very fast it made like a month or two between getting the calls and you know, it was right back that um they're coming uh, i think and i think that that's that's amazing which goes which goes to the point of just the power of being able to you know collaborate connect and bring about you know genuine conversation and and connections with our veteran brothers and sisters and all the amazing things that they're doing and creating you know that folks which wouldn't know about you know what i mean like we literally have all this in our community and we have the ability to you know to broadcast it um to highlight it and to you know really celebrate it which i think it's awesome so i i love it um let's see here uh we got joe uh who i think is ready to join us uh, so give him a second to come on camera before I pop him over. But so when did the idea, uh, for, uh, the sun auction come about for you? It's been, I've been mulling over for maybe like a year now okay. because, um, I really want to make, you know, a, like a mission of highlighting veteran artists. Right. And, and, and that's obviously because, you know, I, I'm an artist myself, but I think because they kind of get forgotten a lot. Um, and so I've been thinking about how can I get them to be proud of the work that they're putting out mm -hmm. and to a community, right? Um, 
I started participating with like veteran artist program and you know things from before. Hey. Hey. So, so Ma Maria, uh, you're gonna have to introduce us. Uh, we have more artists on. You guys, are, we got a lot of creativity going on here. So I, we need you to to do the introduction so we know who we have. Uh, so I'll let you introduce Joe uh, to the to the peoples. All right, you want to know how crazy this this veteran community is? The first time I meet him face, face, I I've known him through emails. So, hi Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hi guys, Maria. So lovely to meet you. Uh, for real, for real. Uh, nice Ooh. to see everybody else. Uh, Amy and DP. I also only know through uh, through text. So. No, no, thank you for being well first of all we have to highlight joe literally got done with two other engagements so he is drinking that energy drink not just for looks he literally is uh, like literally making the he, he is doing the digital rounds of bar hopping and performing did you just get done with a, a comedy so tell us a little bit about yourself joe uh branch of service what you do and what you just finished doing which is why you're fanning yourself sure party um, I'm, I think I'm, I'm ultimately here connected with you guys, uh, through, uh, through Maria. So thank you so much, Maria, for, for having me as a part of the silent auction and, and, uh, doing a little something for, for Claymore Vets. What a phenomenal organization. Uh, I am a, uh, professional stand-up comedian and I also do improv comedy professionally in the, the Washington DC, uh, area, the D, the DMV. Where, 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 where in the DMV are you? I live in Annapolis, Maryland. Oh, okay. I'm in. Uh, I'm by Fairfax in Virginia. Oh, nice. I used to work. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay, by the yep. way. Yep. Are you fine? Okay, very good. They told me uh, in one of the shows that the, I bought these like knockoff uh, earbuds <laughs> on Amazon, and they were like, "We can't hear you." So I just scream into the mic now. Uh, but I before the uh, before the uh, pandemic DP, I was working at part time at Fairfax Public Access. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, which is if, if you're not familiar, it's a great uh, it's a great public access station. They have every resource you could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to we lived for a year. My family and I we lived for a year down in uh, in Fairfax when I was working up uh, near the not too far from the Pentagon. So uh, it's a nice it's a nice area down there. Awesome. But but yeah now yeah now we live in Annapolis, Maryland, and um, you know it's uh, the 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 quarantine and the pandemic was not was not ideal for for comedy. Uh, you know as I as I like to say that. Being a comedian in 2020 and 2021 is essentially just being an unemployed person. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I mean, didn't really work out in my favor, but a lot of these virtual shows are nice because I don't have to drive in and out of D.C., which was which takes longer than you think. What are you talking about? You it's love the happens. traffic. Come on. It's only five minutes <laughs> drive. Come on, guy. It's uh, you never know. That's the thing. I don't know if anybody's ever spent any time in this area. But you never know. Like a forty-five minute drive can turn into two and a half hours. Well, well, but, like that. but Joe, let, let's so let's, let's just focus on that point right there. You know, you're from the city when you when you measure distance and time versus miles. Yeah. Everybody else is like, well, how far is it to get so and so? Oh, it's about five miles. I'm from New York City. It's like, well, how far is it to get? Well, look, technically, it's three miles down the road. But depending on when you go, it's a five minute drive or a two hour drive. All depends. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're you're absolutely right. It's it's a nightmare around here, and God forbid you have to do anything with with 95 South and go anywhere. Oh, south oh no, no, don't do it. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Nope. So yeah, so I do. Uh, I I I believe it or not, um, a few years ago, I I think Maria, I may have mentioned this to you. Um, I left a, a six figure career because I'm an idiot. Uh, to pursue uh, comedy and, and the arts in general because I was very unhappy. Um, and since I left the Marines in 2008, uh, I was on like my fifth different job and I just wasn't getting any fulfillment or happiness in the, you know, the normal civilian realm. And thank God I had my wife's blessing um, and the motivation of a midlife crisis, <laughs> really. <laughs> so, so uh so, you know, I started doing uh, uh, improv comedy at first uh, through the DC improv and then stand up comedy. And that's branched out into painting, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what a phenomenal uh, hobby to discover when you're stuck at home for a year. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Maria, that that silent auction has been just one of the coolest things I've ever done. I mean, those 
those artists are just so t- i look at my picture i'm like it looks like a toddler did, did mine and there's these other like legitimate no artists. no 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 joe you you're just taking your comedy to the arts it's just like oh it's just on the canvas that's <laughs> all i'm doing toddler art <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> it's like it's like finger painting compared to these yeah things. that's Very all no no one's no one's judging i'm not because lord you don't want to see my art <laughs> You know how hard it is to, to create those gradients that you did with spray paint. So I, when I saw that, I'm like, yes, I love this. We we need him up here. So don't don't. I'm don't, so glad. Uh, <laughs> count yourself. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I, well, I'm so I'm so glad you like it. I'm no. sorry. I think I have a. I look at my art. I did. I I, I attempted to do this. Uh, we oh how, how much you want to pay for this? Love that. Movie? Um, is it on wood? Yeah, I think you did do it on wood, actually. <laughs> it is amazing. on wood. Yes. It needs to be finished. Yeah. Right, that's that's awesome. The... And I wanted to also to kind of highlight here, We ha- so those that might be looking to find Joe, uh, this is where you'll find him. You know you came to the right one. Uh, he's on, on Facebook at, at Joe uh, Gagliardi. Uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Because I don't want to mess it up. I, I was going to say Gagliardi. That'll work. It'll work just fine. Okay. Well, was it, is, it, it, te- technically in Italian. Technically in Italian, the second G is silent, but it's I've been uh, called much worse. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you have. So just to make sure that your mom doesn't tune in and throw a shoe or boot at me, how would she say it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, G- Galliardi. Galliardi. Okay. Look, I'm I'm good with that. Second G wasn't even there. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate uh, that, man. No, definitely. Yeah. This is where folks can find you there. Again, we want to make sure that, we, again, we highlight and let people know uh, where to find folks. We'll have links uh, to find that in the comment section. Folks will see that there as well. Uh, but again, being able to see just the amazing things that you guys have done here um, and the silent auction, I, I just wow. think it's amazing. Um, just, wow. just pure amazing to be able to see this and uh, I was asking Maria basically when did this kind of come about as far as the idea. Uh, we do have Maria in the comment section. You may recognize uh, this uh, amazing person who is joining us. I am here. I just finished the veteran voices. Uh, we got Mary Jo in the audience with us. She is amazing. Uh, talk to, you know, just a quick shout out to Mary and what she's doing on her side of uh, the collaboration. Maria, I'll let you talk a little bit more since you're more deeply involved with some of the stuff that Mary Jo does. Uh, but I wanted to definitely just kept, kind of give her a shout out as well. Um, talk to us a little bit about Mary. Hi, MJ. Yes, uh, she is uh, part of the, the uh, Poetic Theater, um, a nonprofit that works with veterans and they teach you how to write and uh, perform your writing in poetry or, you know, like, like spoken word. Um, I participated with them to workshops in the fall, summer in the fall, and uh, they've really taken me out from hiding behind the camera, so. Mm, no, I love that. So, and I think they have another performance next Saturday as well. So they did one today, and then they have an encore on either Friday or Friday. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, so, I, I know Mary reached out today, so we're actually going to coordinate and do uh, some collabs coming down the road as well. So, again, to me, it's just amazing, I think, when when you're doing stuff for the right reason, right, to Joe's point, right, everybody's been in a job that kind of sucks, and it's like, well, it meets a, the requirement of making sure that we pay, but I think if we're resourceful and begin to network and we're smart and we begin to connect the dots, uh, I'm big on intention. I'm big on the fact that, you know, it's not happenstance that people come into your life. I think that, you know, we're all kind of birds of a similar feather, finally leveraging technology to come together. And on a Friday night to be able to do this, you know, Joe could have done his two sets and been done with it, but to come down and support what Maria is doing, to be able to talk about what MJ is doing. Um, I think that's, what's amazing. The Marine Corps rapper on the music side of the house. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, I have a comment here coming up. This is, um, uh, Jerry, uh, one of our veterans, as you can see, Navy 1966 to 1979. Uh, he has his swag on. I will say again, 
the last time he was on, I had to make, I had to bring the picture up because I said, and Joe, I need your perspective. I told Jerry, he might be, this might be a little, we might have to check his 214 or we might have to check his ID because I don't know what he was, I don't know about 66 and him serving, but here is Jerry rocking some of our swag, uh, disabled uh, a Navy veteran. I'm like, 66 where, Jerry? Like, goodness gracious, make me want to put a sweater on. He looks younger than me. Hey, that's my whole point, Jerry. Like, what? <laughs> He said, I got the 214 to back this up, but this is Jerry. He's always supporting us here. Um, and what's amazing, and I bring him up because, one, he looks, you know, he's going to be one of our models because, you know, look, just look at it. Come on now. Uh, that's that part. But Maria, you know, you know the Marine Corps rapper. Joe, uh, the, you know, uh, TMR, the Marine Corps rapper, he was on with us a few weeks ago. Uh, we shared some of his music. And the fact that even someone like Jerry's like, look, I have never really heard rap. That's not my thing. Uh, but I love what you're doing. You know, and Brian is yeah. like, I'm taking it to my to my grandkids, and and they're learning the lyrics, and Amy's like, my kids know the lyrics. Like, where would you see something like that happen? Unless you know, what I'm saying, like that to me is something that I, I just I pause and I appreciate and smell the flowers that someone like TMR with what he does in his art musically is able to connect to someone like Jerry, and Jerry's able to say, hey, I like what he's doing, and I'm sure someone's just like. Uh, Uncle Jerry, Grandpa Jerry, what do you mean you're listening to rap? I'm like, I know this guy over here. You're like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what's amazing about us as a community coming together to do things like this. Uh, but definitely a shout out to Jerry. Again, I have to pull the picture up because if I say it, it won't make sense. But we, we're going to verify his 214 because we still think that his numbers are off. Maybe he was in 87, yes. but 66, God bless him. He's such you're looking fantastic, Jerry. Thank you. Yeah, he is. Makes me want to go do some push-ups now. This is ridiculous. I know. He's such a... He's one of our biggest supporters. I swear he's on here every week supporting us. So we love Jerry. Um, and wait till Capri comes on. Hopefully Capri's going to join us tonight. Joe, you'll have a good time with Capri. Oh, she Capri. Oh, yeah. So, so Joe, you you would... If anyone's going to appreciate this, you will appreciate this. Uh, we had Amy Air Force, who has actually never eaten an MRE up until three oh. weeks ago. You see that? That did you see the comedic timing? I had to wait there. Three. It was almost about about, about a month ago. She had never eaten an MRE. So guess what we did? We live had her try an MRE. You want to talk about comedic gold? Man, look, she had to open the MRE, eat the MRE. We had the whole. It's on YouTube. It is hilarious. It was not that funny, Joe. It was hilarious. Uh, I think Maria fell off with her phone. She'll be back in a second. Uh, but it was hilarious. I'll send you the link, Joe. Literally, I'm talking about freaking gagging, heat, freaking sweats, everything. Um, <laughs> that happened live. It was so, you know, it, so fun fact, you're the Which second flavor? comedian. Uh, what did you have, Amy? Dog food. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the better ones. Oh, God. Asian beef style oh, strips. Man. Asian beef style that. strips. Um, yeah. It was hilarious. Uh, again, you have to just watch it to enjoy it. And the funny part, Joe, is that me and Brian, we were actually in Colorado together. We're right next to her. And she's having all this emotional and physical reaction. We're chowing down on the other two MREs she didn't want. It's just like, hey, let me get that. <laughs> <laughs> what were the what were the other like what were the, the side dishes or whatever they got? Um what do we remember? have? I don't uh, I like mango apple juice. Mm -hmm. comes yeah. In, tells so, oh yeah, so the, that's what the Capri thing is. So she's doing this whole like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to make it. She's doing this whole thing. She's like, oh, oh. so here comes Capri and says, just shove it down your gullet, open your mouth, and put it. I'm like, oh my goodness, suck it out of the bag, suck it out the bag is what she said. <laughs> just like this, she's gonna go. E exactly, Maria, you're back. Oh, uh, the universe was like, you know you're the. Done. <laughs> We got MJ. You know, the, the hit it. it. No, I was going to say the best part about an MRE is if you look at the. I don't know if you guys ever noticed on the heating packet. Maria, uh oh. I know you know. Oh no! Don't don't say, Joe, Joe. Why did you do that? We had a food bar. We had a food bar with the heating packet. So oh, no. someone, not Amy, not Amy, uh, but someone who's never had an MRE like Amy, put a pouch to make the chocolate milk. So she put the water pouch to heat up in the pouch, which means there's two waters now. There's one to activate the heater and then one in the bag. 
Well, she did oh that God. and then put the heater water, not the bag sealed water, into the stuff. <laughs> That's like deadly poison. That's like, I don't know what that is. She doesn't need the COVID vaccine at this point. <laughs> no, She's immune. Oh it was stressful. It was, it was very stressful. Everybody was laughing at me. I was trying not to throw up. I was just trying to get through what I said I was going to do. Yeah. Maria, we the, needed we needed you. The best part The best part about those bags, if you look, if anyone ever gets an MRE and you look at the heating bag, this is the this is instructions by the United States government, keep in mind. It says when you fill it up and start to heat it, and I quote, it says lean it against a rock or something. <laughs> That's the part yeah, that no, apparently no, 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 no. a high, a, a fun fact, a high ASVAB score does not help with the reading fundamentals, apparently. No, definitely uh, not. We got, uh, we, we were paranoid that we were going to burn the house. I was, I was generally scared. I'm like, Airbnb is never going to let us back again. This is going to take my deposit. <laughs> um mj quick shout out to her army nurse uh she says a long time ago her and jerry i don't know what they're talking about i need 214s to verify time frame so i don't buy this long time ago mj uh on, on your side of the house um let's see let me bring in uh maria she's gonna come in from another feed here there you go so we got mj in the house uh she's sharing some love Eric asked a question, Maria, if you could do a sculpture of Amy, uh, Priceless oh, Face, when God, she started. Eric, really? yeah. Maria, do you see this? Now we're perverting this. So I don't know if you, have you heard. Oh, no. Maria. She's like, I'm not having Literally, she, did she, she, she. That was overload. No, I, I, Maria, did, Maria, did you literally say, I'm out of here, I'm not doing this? No, I, I don't know what's going on. Listen, I will, I will make it. And Amy, I will make it nice. Not not your surprise face. <laughs> not the surprise face. So there's that. Um, a quick on, disclaimer Eric. here. So uh, no Tuesday, uh, 3.30, doing an encore of Veteran Voices. Uh, so shout out on that side of the house. Um, Eric, uh, no, the hats are, are, gonna, are being loaded as we speak. So you won't, they'll be live here by tomorrow. Uh, so we just gave them the green, uh, the green, the thumbs up. Uh, Jesse chiming in, uh, saying Jerry is the bomb dot com. Yes. Um, we had Jesse on last week, and she's gonna eat an MRE yes. live with us. Yes, and so our people, it's gonna be worse than my reaction. Joe, we might need you to moderate some of this stuff because I don't have the comedic timing, but I don't know if we, Maria, I don't look. We we need to, this needs to be calculated. We need all services to combine. We got the army here. We got you know the air force is in the room, and the Marine Corps is here. I don't you know and. Yep. We got we got the old school navy uh, from sixty six quote unquote from Jerry again that's subject to verification. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you know Joe who crayons ready to eat is. Let me ask before I say anything. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah. howdy Joe from us at Crayon Ready to Eat. We'd love to connect to see if you're up for a collab uh, to get your art into one of our coloring books. So again, Frank crayons ready oh, to yes, eat. Yes. He is doing uh, the world again. He took the moniker. He is a marine. Crayons ready to eat. C R E effing genius. Well, what do you do with crayons? You got to color. So guess what? He's doing a coloring book and artists are needed. So yet again, that's three. That's keep awesome. tabs, people. That's three connections right there. Keep happening. Um, so this is amazing. That is amazing. Well, the great thing about his uh, crayons ready to eat is they're not only edible, but you can color with them as well. Mm -hmm. so. Joe, we got, we got, <laughs> exactly. Book. So you can color. color and eat the crayons, by the way. So you can actually color and crayon, uh, color and eat. Uh, Eric as well. We'll make a point to connect you with Joe as well. Uh, love to connect. Eric, so we're going to ask you if I want to sing. I think his connection is breaking up. So, um, what? He didn't ask me if I Joe. want to sing for this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take uh, some liberties here, Joe. And say that yeah. in comedy, right, there's a thing of timing. Um, if you notice, Maria, when Amy brought that microphone up, I felt the reverberations over on Maria's side of the screen of how quickly she pulled that damn microphone up. Literally on cue, Amy brings up that damn microphone every single time. If you notice it, it's not even like, so how come you didn't call me? <laughs> yes, Eric. That's Maria, yes. you have to make a point to try to include a microphone, and if you do some art pieces to uh, this here, uh, oh, let me work yeah, for the. I was actually 
thinking Frank also didn't offer me a page in his crayons ready to eat. So we have Michael here, uh, a bearded veteran in the house. Uh, we want to give a shout out to him. What's up, Michael? What's up? <laughs> we got the bearded veteran in the house. Uh, Mark is here with us as well. What's going on, my brother? Uh, Mark, hey, what's up? Mike man? said, let it grow, Joe. Let it grow, Joe. Let it grow. <laughs> let it grow. Let it grow, Joe. Don't tell my wife. Well, my wife. <laughs> um, Eric said, what did you say, Amy? Um, I, I don't think he heard you when you were trying to make your pitch. His tinnitus. His is acting up. Oh, sweet Lord. Like, can you, this, is, I, this can't be I real. I was just going to ask that. This can't be real. If you're coloring with chocolate that's edible, should we be able to eat the pages after you finish coloring? Man, Frank, we are, we are connected. Maria, um... <laughs> First of all, what is your take? Are, are you excited for this? Because this is a uh, we're 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 gonna switch uh, again. I like to work with the comments and make sure the audience we kind of bring them up as well. Uh, but now we're talking about food again. Like, man, arts, comedy, food—it's all mixed in there. Amy's getting some stuff made up. She almost died with the MRE. We're bringing Joe back. The edible edible cray, uh, crayons and coloring book. Maria, what is your take on all this stuff? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> It's got, it's like we got, uh, is that, you know, when you, when you got, uh, Liberty taken away, you're all on the barracks, like, crap. <laughs> 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 uh, crazy. That's exactly how he feels right now. It's like a Friday night, we're all stuck into an oven. Maria, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Do you remember way back when, when someone may have approached you and said, Maria, would you like to go to the dance? And you probably said, well, I'm not really going to go because I have a family trip. And you were nice to let them down. Um, you know, it's an art to do that. I never knew that a man could master the art of the pivot uh, the way that Eric has. Because uh, Eric says, you can always be a huge part of the fundraiser, Amy. I love you. I was just stepping carefully after the proposed MRE culture. That right there is about as clear a way of saying not. <laughs> like, can we just give? Can we just go ahead and, and give that a daggone round of applause? Because that is uh, genius. But Eric's in the <laughs> world, so he, he knows how to, you know, smooth this this is this is for Eric right here. Yeah. <laughs> Golf <clap. laughs> Um, you know what? Look, here's a tie-in. So now we're getting back to you know uh, one thing that happens, Joe, is there's a segment here where we start this, and at a certain point, all control gets lost. Once we once we cross the point of no return, we pretty much kind of just say, hey, we've lost all control. It's going downhill from here. Um, we're not completely lost control as of yet, but art that you can eat. I don't know, Maria. This is kind of, you know, listen, let me talk. Let, let, let. There's videos, right? When they actually sculpt with chocolate, Frank, let's make this happen. Like chocolate is, is the same condi like, um, consistency of clay mm -hmm. and it's so much better because once it gets hardened, you can eat it. So Frank, let's make this happen. Mm -hmm. Look at this, Maria. Art deal with dough. All the expressive work that builds up an appetite. Come on now, <laughs> goodness gracious! <laughs> this is like a mastermind. We've we've completely evolved here. Listen, and you know I'm what? starving right now. I know. Seriously, damn it, Frank. <laughs> Where are the chocolates? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, we got Dancing no, no, no. Brian that we'll bring in later uh, here. Uh, there's always uh, a segment where we bring in Dancing Baby Brian, Joe. Uh, you'll, you'll get to meet him here shortly. It's not past his bedtime yet. Um, Brian, did you see here, uh, you know, sadly, we'll, you know, her, his shoulder is not what it used to be. Uh, there was a time where he was more nimble uh, and was able to move a little bit better. Sadly, that's no longer the case um, because, you know, his veteran status and the way things are kind of set up. So, you know, we were able to find uh, a picture of a video of him, a still, a gif, what have you, of him back in the day, um, actually moving. And here is actually baby Brian. And he <laughs> likes to get down uh, to the get down. So for those that are interested right. and miss it, here, this is for baby Brian. Just another sunny day. 
If you notice, it's the same shoulder though that keeps moving. He's always had that 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 slower other shoulder. They might have called that a pre-existing condition. Yeah, yeah, we, we we can't show the we can't show this too much because the VA might be like, wait a second, we see it. His shoulder was always kind of slower. Whoa, let me see here. <laughs> He's oh, using that thing as a well child. done. Um, nice moves, man. I, I hey, look, bro, it, it's in Brian's blood. Um, MJ says, don't worry, we're starting Zumba Zoom and the Veteran Art Workshop online platform. So. I'm telling you, wow. uh, we have all that we need in our community, people. Uh, so, to the art piece, uh, let, let's talk a little. Talk to me a little bit about Maria, Maria Jo. Um, you know, Joe on your side of the house, going into comedy. Talk to me how you kind of that transition happened for art, because uh, I, I see how you connected with Maria and, and being able to do that. But what has that meant for you? Because I was able to pick up the piece of leaving corporate world to actually pursue a passion mm -hmm. and using comedy as that piece and then now the art part so what has that done for you maria has shared what art has done for her from her post-traumatic uh we went, you know, i love what you said post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth so what has that done for you what has the arts done for you being able to take your creativity from the stage and comedic side to the actual you know art itself and being part of an auction what has that meant to you the world i mean in a in a word and maria that was super powerful stuff i mean thank you for sharing that that was just i mean i was moved by that that was incredible um and i i echo a lot of a lot of your comments i um the long and the short of it is when i when i came back uh for my second iraq deployment in 2008 i i was very i had a very fortunate uh pair of trips to iraq where i 10 fingers 10 toes none of my marines were killed um, you know, it was about as, as good as two Iraq deployments get, but like something was very, still very different. Um, I, now it was, uh, my situation was a little bit complex because I was dealing with my, si my little sister died of cancer before, like four years before mm. I got back from my two trips to the war. So there was some unresolved grief there, but I just wasn't the same. Like I would, I, I got my, the first job I got after the Marines lasted a year. And then I, I couldn't stand it anymore. The next job, a year, and then a year, you know, you, you see the pattern here until I finally found a job uh, selling life insurance for a military nonprofit. And it it lasted three years, but it 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 fizzled out because I just I couldn't I couldn't put my whole heart into it. Uh, and I was very, you know, my I met my wife in, in 20, uh, 2014. Um, and she helped me recognize, you know, my suffering, and um, that led me to, to get hooked up with a brilliant psychologist. And through some of the healing uh, work we did in therapy, she asked me point blank, "What do you remember doing between the ages of four and six when mm -hmm. you were like a little kid?" You know, and I was always trying to make my parents laugh. I, I like memorized the entire like all these Disney uh, show tunes like the Little Mermaid soundtrack and I'm running around the house like see you know I was like a drama kid trapped in this body. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so, so she said I told her that and she said okay, don't come back till you signed up for an improv class. Wow. And that was in October of, of 2017. I signed up uh, for a level one improv course with the DC Improv, and I I never looked back. I found the the same sense of like happiness and fulfillment that I got from my work as a United States Marine, which, you know, is obviously very fulfilling work. Anybody that serves in the military knows there's a certain nobility to it, right? Um, and I, you know, I, I was very unhappy. I, I never had more money, but I was never unhappier. And I, that sounds crazy, I know, but it's, it was the truth. There was no fulfillment there. And so I started doing, um, I started moving up through the improv world. Uh, and eventually got to the point where I, you know, that that uh, last corporate job really just imploded. Um, and I said, what the hell? You know, I was, I think, 30, uh, 36 or 37 at the time, 39 now. Um, and I look, somehow look older than everybody in the chat, but whatever. Um, Especially Jerry makes us all look older. Let's just put that out there. 
unbelievable. I don't, I don't know what Jerry and, and MJ eat, but like you gotta send me a message or something because I'm doing it wrong. But um, <laughs> but so yeah, so I was I was I said what you know I talked to my wife. I said what the hell if it's not if it's not now that I take a shot at the performing arts, it's never gonna happen. And so I did, and thank God it all worked out. But the the visual art side, the painting, I just discovered. Uh, I saw like a YouTube video of some guy in Times Square doing these like very quick but really cool spray paint uh, art. And I thought, I got time. <laughs> I got a garage. Let me see if I can uh, make this work. And about, a, I don't know, a year and a half later or so, I've, I've, uh, I've been very fortunate that I, you know, just with, with a lot of practice and dedication. And, and I, the thing is, I absolutely love it. Like the, the, the feeling of like taking, I just did a show last week. Uh, it was a live improv show, and during the show, the camera was on me the whole time. I did like a like a Bob Ross type thing, if you know who Bob Ross is. I started with a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. I got some suggestions from the audience for colors, and I made a painting. I'll show it to you. It's right here. So I created this live. Oh wow! On the show, if you can see. Wow. It. Yeah. It's uh, it's an eighteen really... by twenty four stretched canvas. And you can see here the colors that the audience gave me are, are contained in here. It's like orange, white, black, mm -hmm. purple. But, but what you really can't see is that the the planet this the planet here glows in the dark, mm. and, and up here in the in the in the sky there's all this. Uh, it's called holographic glitter. It's like industrial strength stripper glitter. So, but it makes the the stars kind of sparkle uh, in the right light. So, uh, I'm, I mean, gonna, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna echo what MJ just cool. said. Wow! Like seriously. Thank you. Yeah. So talk so it's, it's, so talk to me about uh, about this one here as well that we have on the screen, um, which yeah. again it's 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 amazing just to be able to see this, and I want to kind of zoom into it so folks can really kind of appreciate and take a look at. To me, I've seen this. So I'm from New York City, Times Square. Uh, I've seen you know folks do these stuff, and it's just always like amazing to see them just do it and and all that stuff like. Oh, amazing you know what i mean like this is one of the art pieces that you have here uh on the side of the auction as well uh talk to us a little bit about this brother sure so uh and and thank you for doing this dp i appreciate you highlighting it very much um and and thank you again to maria for making it all possible i'm, I'm just super honored to be a part of the whole thing if you notice that moon up in the top left i originally did this piece for black history month and so that's why the the moon is colored in the uh, the, the colors of Black History Month, mm -hmm. and it was just a it was just a thought I had. Um, it's done on glossy uh, glossy paper. Uh, the same thing. You can't really see the sparkles, but the the, the stars will sparkle in the right light, uh, and that big planet behind the, the the skyline there will glow in the dark as well. And so it's you know I, I, the thing is, DP, I love one of the things I love about comedy, in particular improv comedy. It's the same reason I love to cook. I never use recipes. I love to just create from nothing. And so when I do these paintings, I start with a blank canvas or a blank. Maria, you know what I'm talking about. I start with a blank page or a blank canvas, and I just see what comes out of my head. And it's, you know, it's a great feeling. It really is. And, and, and let me ask you, Maria, how does it feel for you, you know, to not only take your art and what you've done, but really now to kind of create space for others. Uh, because I really wanted to highlight with Joe, uh, you know, his his journey, because really it, it kind of highlights what you're doing on your side, which is you are an artist yourself, but you've created a space for someone who is a, a comic, who is a stand-up, to be able to express himself and be part of something where it's just like, I'm sure, you know, one, five, ten years ago, you would have told Joe, like, hey, you're going to be on, a, on an auction, you're going to be an artist. It's like, yeah, buddy, let me get back on this phone and make these cold calls. Like, that, you know what I mean? Like, you don't think about that stuff. Like, yeah, me do that? Okay, yeah, not today. Tell us, tell us what that means for you at Claymore Vets and just you as an artist, as a veteran, and literally as a leader in your space because you're creating and enabling and others to be able to take their journey. Uh, talk to me about that. If they would have had told Joe that he'd be painted with glitter. Marine, your new, it's glitter. Anyway, no, but, you know, I love this. I love it. Uh, that you create out of nothing, right? And and that is the, the best feeling in the world. When you, you have a blank canvas, I have a piece of, you know, just mud. It's like a lump of mud and I can make something tangible. And, and 
there's such a sense of pride in that, and that, you know, we're not, and like I say this all the time, because we're not destructive, right? We were trained to be destructive, but in, in our core, we're all creative people, right? And so for me to be able to give others this freedom and this space to tap into the creativity and have that sense of knowing yourself, because it, art doesn't even have to be like a fine art, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, technical and skills and everything. It's what your soul translates into this, this plane, right? And mm. and to hear people, like, you know, be excited that they found something that makes them happy again, it's it's everything to me. Um, like I said, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm very open about my struggles with depression and things like that and i really think art is the buffer mm. you know good days and bad days and, and the bad days when things we just want to disconnect from everything art in any form in any modality is there to help you translate your your soul mm. and a lot of times you can understand yourself better mm. just by creating you know because because it's art put words into your feeling and it's even harder to express what you're feeling to others especially the ones close to you um because you don't want to hurt them and in and, in and, and, and in an attempt to protect them you end up hurting them because then they feel alienated you know um and so creating art it's a way to communicate with them mm. you're able to create a vis visual language that people can. um so yeah i mean I really do feel very lucky that I get to to, to, to provide this for, for others. And I, I I honestly, I know this is going to sound like very like hippie lovey and whatever, but I think art is the, the way to heal the world. I, I do. And, and, we, and we talked about that on our episode, Maria, when you talked about, you know, what art did for you and your family to be able to express that. Um, because, again, it's how, how do you have a conversation? So for those, you know, that don't know, um, I have a service dog. He's actually here laid out next to me um, at the moment. But, you know, that was a conversation piece for me, right? How did I have a conversation um, being a Latino with my mom and my dad? I literally, my service dog was the conversation piece. Like, wait a minute, he's not a regular dog? Like, no, it's a service dog. What does that mean? That was a conversation piece. Uh, and there was so much that still could not be said because, you know, like I've said, you know, many a times, you know, and it's obviously tongue in cheek, but there really isn't a word in Spanish for PTSD, right? There's none of that, right? We, we immigrated here to be better, to do better and to advance and so forth. We don't show weakness. And that's a hard conversation to turn around and say, I get it, but you know, things are not the same. It's okay to not be okay is not really something that happens in, you know, minority communities, especially immigrants and so forth. Uh, so for Maria, when she shared what the art did for her to be able to have that there and that be part of like, I never knew Maria what was going on. The art was able to tell things that Maria couldn't articulate because to your point, I'm combative now. Like, I want the best for you, but I don't know how to receive what you're telling me, Maria, right? I don't understand how best to understand what you're saying, but that art broke through all of that. My ignorance, my fears, you know, my biases, and I just saw the art for what it was, and understanding what you sculpted got us right to it. Like, and that to me is the powerful piece where I wanted to add to that for those that didn't see the special that me and Maria did, and she talks about that. Uh, I think it's very powerful, and I just wanted to double down because it's not you know, food for your woo woo. It's true. It's the fact that you have the ability to express yourself and to see Joe, you know, take his ability to do something like this and express that and, and put that art out there for us as veterans. This is what's in our community. We have artists, we have musicians, we have creators, we have business people, we have everything. Um, and what we have to work on, which is happening here, uh, is collaborating as veterans. I want to read one of the points here for the Rita heads, uh, specifically, even though you're here, Joe, already. Uh, but I'd be remiss to not read the Rita head. Uh, Claymore Vets is stoked to highlight the amazing work of Marine veteran artists and comedy powerhouse. Uh, Joe, this 22 <laughs> high by 14 wide futuristic piece landscape was created using spray paint on glossy paper. Semper Fi, sir. Thanks. Uh, fantastic 
<laughs> we do have a lifeline here real quick. MJ did re uh, reach out and say, Maria, the nuns wrote, ugh, on my drawing. I don't think you can help me. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, the Catholic help you. I don't think you can help you. I, everybody can create. And you know, uh, before I, I forget about this, David, I want to bro something up. You asked me when did this start for me to find light, right? I remember this was back in like 2016 when I was just getting out into the, into the, the veteran artist world. and we had this tent and this guy walked in and you know, he saw, he saw the papers or, and he like kind of scoffed at it. He's like a veteran artist. That's an oxymoron. All you mm. people drawing, you can't create anything. I had to like swallow down. I was like, I'm gonna give you a knuckle sandwich by now, but you know, I was like, <laughs> and I'm like, sir, because we've seen the darkness that we can create art, you know? And that to me was like, it was kind of one of those like, don't tell me I can't do it because I'm gonna show you how bad I can mm. do it, you know? And then, and that's, I think all of us veterans, we're creators. We were trained to be destructive, but in our in our essence, we create. So yeah, and, and, and it's energy, right? And I, I think to, you know, and, and I'll go so far to say, to Joe's point, um, you know, we do what we have to do, and sometimes life happens. You do the job, you gotta provide, uh, but we all innately have, you know, energy, and we can do what we want with it. To Maria's point, we took that and became the best Marines, the best soldiers, the best sailors, the best airmen we could, and we did the job assigned to us, and we mastered it, and we and we proceeded. Um, but many of us, you know, took that and created destructive energies to be able to operate in that space. I understand we did that. We came back. Some of us not completely whole, but we're here to tell the stories of those that are not here, which is another part to be highlighting here because now we have to do and we have the ability and almost um, the, you know the responsibility that all of us here are, are taking up is to tell the story of that person that did not come back to tell the story that right now there's someone who feels alienated who feels alone and may well become a statistic and beyond just the awareness of guys 22 a day or hey this was some push-ups like no let's do something let's create art let's have conversations and that's why we do this every friday and say hey you might be having you you could be anywhere you want to be tonight but guess what you're holding space with us here and we have some veterans that literally have reached out and they're like hey I have nothing to look forward to but to be able to tune in and see what you guys are doing for a little bit. And if I can laugh with you guys and see baby Brian doing a shoulder piece or see Joe come in or some of the art come in, that's what it's about. It's about creating that accountability of saying, hey, look, we got formation Friday night at 9 o'clock. So get your ass in the computer. Come hang out with us for a little bit. I want to see your comments. We want to have a conversation uh, because we have the ability to be constructive now. And to be able to put our egos to the side and really support each other. Um, and I think that creative energy, Maria, to your point, which art gives us, it's like what the Marine Corps rapper does and what you do and what Joe does. It's art. Literally, we are creative by nature and have the ability to channel that. And I think that's what, to, to what I was saying about, about Joe. His ability to now tap into the comedic really... It's more than that. You know what I mean? And if you want to time in on this, Joe, I definitely would love you to do that. But I think there's something that happens when we do what we do, right? Because I've always said that it's the person that wants to make you laugh that knows what it's like to cry. It's the person that wants to hug who knows what it's like to be detached. It's the person who wants to hold space who knows what it's like to not have space. So when you see someone doing something and they're in their element, understand they are doing it for more than that personal rewarding feeling. It's because they know that this is doing something that they don't want others to feel. And if we have the ability to do that, that's what the Marine Corps rapper does through his music. That's what Maria does through her art. That's what Joe does through his stand-up comedy. That's art. That's energy. That's creating space. And if we understand that, it makes sense. It's not just, oh, I'm a comic or, oh, I'm an artist. No, it's literally saying we're trying to communicate what sometimes words cannot alone do. Uh, but I want to pass it to you, Joe, to talk about that, because I think especially in the comedic space, there's healing and there's therapy in letting that out. Because for some, especially veterans, you know, and we know them, right? It's like, oh, I'm just a grumpy old Vietnam veteran and I don't laugh. And, duh, 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 duh. and it's just like, dude, you have so much hurt. You're still a 17-year-old kid that deployed to Vietnam in the 60s. 
You came back and you might be older now, but you've never let out a lot of those things. You haven't let yourself feel anymore. You haven't had a good laugh in a while. And I think the power of art to see it visually for some it just hits you different when you understand. Like, I can relate to what you put together. Those boots, Maria, they speak to me, right? Uh, to you, Joe, what you're able to do in this space and, and have that release for someone, I think it's powerful. But I want to ask you, what's your take on that? Because, again, I say stuff sometimes, but having an artist and a comedian with us and just artistic people and creative people really just kind of, you know, doubles down on that point. So I want to hand it off to you on that side, brother. No, that's that's extremely well said, DP. No question about it. And Maria, to you as well. It's, it's that's hard to follow. I, you guys really summed it up. You know, my father. I don't know if he's if he's uh, if he's still watching, Dad. If you're there, um, he did a great job in in he and my mom did a great job of really uh, instilling in me a, a healthy respect for the fact that there there's a lot of you know this country is far from perfect, but there's a lot of places in the world where you don't have any freedoms mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, there, we, we, my point being, even with all the, the blemishes that this country has, th what we're able to do here and what we're, what we were supposed to represent, I think was earned and it was earned with great sacrifice. And so I've always had a healthy respect for the military. Like I always knew I, I would serve at, at some point in my life. Um, but what, what I think to your point, TP, what I think, I would say about at least comedy, because I, I do a joke about how, like, I don't have any stage fright. I'm very blessed. But I have, like, former uh, explosive ordnance disposal guys and, like, Navy SEALs come up to me after a show and say, oh, dude, you're so brave. I could never do what you do. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just making wisecracks, man. Like, what are you talking? You, like, diffuse bombs for a living. But the thing is... What I, what I really love to do is connect. It's like a connection. And, and through, I th Maria, you might agree, through the, and even DP, for, you know, you and Amy and Brian, what you guys do here, we're, we're creating, connect, you know, human connections. And that's what ultimately I think gets lost in the, the modern world of like uh, social media and, and pe everybody's like got this anonymous, you know, this ability to be anonymous in your interactions online. And it's that connection that really, that really appeals to me is I, I can walk into a room with, you know, the, the biggest show I, I ever did, I think was 300 something odd people. I didn't, I knew very few of them, but when I heard them all laughing, there's some connection that we made or there's some, something that they could relate to in the, the, you know, my goofball take on life or society or whatever it is. And, and I think when you're talking about like Maria, what you were talking about earlier with your suffering, that's so powerful because that speaks to me. I mean, I wear this this memorial bracelet uh, for a friend of mine named Brendan Looney, who was a Navy SEAL who didn't come home. Mm. And I wear this every day as a reminder that it can all end. He was two weeks from coming home from Afghanistan, two weeks, and his helicopter crashed into a mountain. Mm. It can all end in an instant. Whenever my time comes, I. I don't want to be remembered from an ego standpoint. I want to be remembered for, for like, I put more goodness into the world than I, than I took from it because I fully recognize, you know, I do, I joke about having a midlife crisis or being an idiot for pursuing the arts, but I fully, I, that's a joke. I fully recognize I am so blessed to have the ability to do this because DP, you hit the nail on the head. You got to pay bills. You got to put food on the table. And because of my, my family dynamic, I'm able to do and pursue what I love, but I'm also able to give back because I, the truth of the matter is I owe when it comes to the universe, I, I, you know, or God or whatever you, whatever you believe, I am in debt to that very much. I, I almost was a statistic. And, and if, if anybody, uh, if you look online, if anybody, you go to YouTube, type in Joe Gagliardi, uh, saving lives with laughter. And you'll see a piece that I did uh, with Penn Fed Credit Union about suicide and about reaching out and about how you're not alone. Whatever you're feeling, whether you're in pain or you're thriving or whatever it is, you're not alone. And, and making connections with each other, whether we're happy and connecting with someone who's not so happy or we're, we're you know, we're both happy, whatever, the, whatever it is, that human connection piece is so 
crucial, I think, to, uh, to, to, to happiness and fulfillment in life. And that's ultimately what I get from, uh, from the work I do on stage. And I think that's powerful um, because if people understand, you know, I mean, I think that's what's missing sometimes is the context uh, that goes behind that. Uh, and some of the comments here actually, you know, kind of validate everything that's been said, been said here. Uh, MJ put a comment here that I want to share. The opposite of war is in peace. It's creation by Jonathan uh, Larson, uh, which, again, so, you know, back on, you know, thank you so much for that. One of the points you brought up here as well, MJ, was I know that I know that my guided meditation, if you guys haven't heard her voice, she has a melodic voice like she's definitely made for that. It's, you know, you got to check out Mary Jo when she does. Um, but I know my guided meditations work when my veteran service dogs take a nap. Uh, they know their person is secure. It is the truth. Like, literally... You know, if you've met me in life, my service dog is, two, you know, he's a yellow lab. He's two years old. He's amazing. But he is a ball of energy. And he is knocked the heck out. Like, he's like, look, you're doing your thing. I'm taking a nap. You're, I'm off duty now. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> TF, TMR concurs uh, with the statements being said here. Uh, Eric did jump in and said, you know, I challenge a statement, Maria. He's banned from creating art or singing. Um, but <laughs> but obviously, you know, that's tongue in cheek. Um MJ did make a point to highlight she is an Army Nurse Corps veteran. She served from 19XX to 19XS. We will leave it at that. I am not opening that kind of worms or getting punched today. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rosemary doubles down with you, Maria. Uh, absolutely there. Uh, Lisa, uh, g coming back to Eric, uh, you create social action. Uh, uh, you can create social action and networking. Create doesn't just mean music and art. It really comes in different ways. Uh, Jesse had a great one here that people wrote down. I heard this and it seems to fit here very well. Creativity is intelligence having fun. Yes. Let that sink in there for just a little bit. I love that. Yeah. That is the comment That's of the day. Fantastic. It is. Uh, MJ said, look, I'm writing that down. <laughs> Rosemary, can we can we pull up her painting? Mm -hmm. She's yes. She painting. Uh, I think it was when she was like sixty-two. She was one of my. Uh, is she? High, she's high she's high on the high. auction. She's on the site as well. Correct. Her yeah, piece yeah, yeah. is which which is her piece? So I can pull it up here. Playing the accordion. Yes. Yeah. Let's so go she, there. Uh, two years ago, I curated uh, a woman that art. <coughs> Columbia University. That was her first civic wow. me back then. And I am always wow. blown away by her art. She is amazing. And she only started painting when she was, I think, 60, 62. So um, if you're there, uh, Rosemary, maybe you could type in and, and talk about your, your painting. Um, she made this um, from a photograph that she took from a, a homeless boy in Mexico. Um, yeah hopefully she's there and i, I want to read uh so for rosemary's piece that we have here um claymore vets is proud to highlight uh this navy veteran artist themed uh frame 24 by 30 uh water-based oil on a uh, gesso board as painted from a photograph taken of a homeless family in tijuana mexico in 19 in the 1980s uh, the little boy was sitting alone playing his accordion to see more of her art, you can follow this page. Uh, Rose has been practicing her art in PTSD art pro in the PTSD art program at the North uh, Port VA uh, during the past four years. After not painting for over 25 years, she also volunteers wow. two days per week at the PTSD art program wow. and approximately eight hours a week for the VA volunteer office. Two years ago, she exhibited her paintings at the Young Ballet. Uh, for the first time at the VA Center for Women Veterans Art Exhibit in collaboration with Veterans Art Venue at Columbia University. Wow. Amazing. Wow. That was such a cool experience because uh, her family came and her grandkids came and like this was the first time she was an exhibit in art. And I, I, had, I had 18 or 19 women across eras. Mm. Um, you know, from from World War Two up till now, like the youngest was eighteen, and it was so empowering to see all these women veterans feel seen. You know, so I'm so glad, Rosemary, you're here. If you want to talk about your art, um, I'm I'm sure people read it. So if you want to, you know, yeah. 
Um, and, and again, for those, uh, the link, uh, we have it, again, we'll have it in the description and the comments as well to all the amazing art pieces that we have here um, that we want to highlight as well. So we have some information that I want to make sure that we make a point to speak on. Uh, we showed Joe's piece as well. Uh, let's see here. We have um, this one over here, Everlasting uh, piece. This is, a, this is amazing. This is by John Brooks. Let me pull him up here. Uh, so Claymore uh, Vets is proud to highlight our next Army veteran artist, uh, John Brooks, um, Juan uh, Brookstone. Uh, Everlasting is an acrylic painting, 36 by 36 by 2.5 on framed. While uh, service to my country and community is a big part of who I am, so is art. Art is my creative space, my therapy, and in my DNA. In fact, my easel is the same easel used by my great grandmother a hundred my great grandmother a wow. hundred years ago and more recently by my mother i'm wow. connected to each of my paintings in a very personal way and again that's when you see something like this right understanding and reading that and hearing that it really just kind of goes and makes us that much more real and personal that something that rich in history not only has that history of the easel like the paint like the fact that that's been in the family but this is one of our people you know like this is the amazing part of being able to even have this conversation and showcase art like this um just amazing, um, and we see here on the silent auction the way they work. Uh, I'm not going to explain. So Maria explains to us how silent auctions work. I'm assuming they're anonymous because there's since it's uh, anonymous um, and silent. Well, I mean, you can choose if you want to be anonymous. You can put your name up there. But basically, uh, you could bid on uh, increments of ten dollars, and once you have bid on a piece. If, if you get outbid it, you'll get a text and we're like, hey, you know, you've gotten outbid it. I, it was, I mean, it was so exciting to see this painting go up because it started as soon as we put the link up, it went to like a hundred. And then <laughs> one of my, like, hey, it's, it's 300. I'm like, no way. And then like, I could look at it. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, I, lo I love them all, but I especially love abstract. This is amazing. Let's see, which is, uh, uh, and I yeah. can't get over the spray painting. How you did that with spray paint, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I thank you guys. There, there is one uh, DP. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to, if I, if I could yeah. point out, you see the Moto heart. Yeah, the something. Moto is. Yes, she, uh, she's a dear Stephanie Klein is a dear friend of mine, and it like that is such a phenomenally creative piece. She made that quilt. Out wow. of her old, each one of those panels oh. is a piece of one of her old Marine Corps uniforms. Wow. That is so phenomenal. I love that. Wow. That is so creative wow. to me because it's so personal, right? You talk about that that connection. Mm -hmm. Those were pieces of the uniforms that she wore serving her country, and now it's a a, mm. a quilt that can be displayed or keep you warm or whatever it is. I'm that like I would have never thought of that. Yeah, I, I did. I. Uh, so to to Stephanie's artwork here, uh, this woman's Hearst, uh, Hearst History Month, uh, Claymore Vets is also proud to highlight this amazing Marine Corps veteran artist and producer, uh, Stephanie Semper Fi. Ma'am, this amazing hanging quilt is 20 by 21.5, hand sewn out of her uniform. Amazing. And amen to what MJ, MJ just said here. Uh, which is the story behind the canvas draws us to the art. That yeah, is powerful. And, and a cool thing so about true. this belt, uh, someone messaged me on, on Instagram on the Claymore Vets account. And I mean, this is before the auction went off. And he's like, hey, please, please make sure that you send me the link for this quilt because I've been eyeing it. And I so as soon as I went up and I'm like, hey, it's up. I, I have a feeling this is the person that was like, this is mine. I, mm -hmm. you know. Laying like, so claim cool. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So. Um, let's see. So let's, so we saw Everlasting Rainbow Landscape. Let's look at Until Valhalla. Um, so this piece is by wow. s artist Stephen O. Uh, pull up his uh, information here. 
Uh, so let's see here. Steven uh, Evans, uh, Claymore Vets is proud to highlight this amazing uh, and versatile Navy veteran artist uh, and kids author, Steve O. Evans, uh, who's a uh, who's as kind as he is electric. Uh, check out this piece un called Until Valhalla. It is 30 by 40 acrylic on linen painting. Uh, again, just uh, amazing to be able to see just again the story behind the art uh we have one of our sisters here in the uh, comment section you may recognize her from uh latina she served we got liz in the house saying i love claymore vets yes <laughs> i love this yeah no uh, yes. he, uh, he's awesome he's a really like a uh, prolific artist uh he just had his exhibit at um Oh my god, I'm gonna mess this up. Um, some distillery. It was so cool. Like he created like kind of a, a a guessing game with his art, and he was like, "Hey, give it, give it a title to it." And it was it was it was so cool. Um, he also wrote a book for children. Um, if you guys go on his page, you'll be able to see. Um, yeah, but he's super nice. That's an amazing piece. My God. Mm -hmm. it, it is. Wow. Wow. And here's a, and some of the other artwork and stuff that he does, which is amazing. So, uh, yeah, this is this is cool. Like this is this is this is, these are our people. That, that's what I just kind of keep going back to. This is our community. These are our people, and this is the goodness that resides in our you know tribe, which is again just powerful. Um, Let's see. Uh, did we see? We, did we? Um, t no, we haven't gone to the eagle one yet. Let's let's bring up this one here. Uh, this so, is Claudia. Mm -hmm. She's a she's the sister of a Vietnam veteran. Um, we I, I we had a lot of people reach out to us if you know because I wanted at first we wanted to keep it just veterans, but you know, I think our family circles are so important to us. It is what keeps us going. So we uh, wanted to honor them as well. And yeah, so she's a sister of one of my favorite professors. <laughs> oh, awesome! Um, I love this. That is like, incredible. This is awesome. I, it, wow. it really, it really is. Um, let's see here. Claudia Claymore Vets is excited to highlight this amazing awesome. artist, Claudia Slater. Uh, she is the sister of Vietnam veterans. The eagle. Um, uh, uh, Gickley is twenty-four by forty-eight, uh, which is truly amazing. Um, the detail on this is. Amazing. Yeah, she's really very, very, very good. This is awesome. And again, I love it for those that are that love the art. You have the ability to click on their social media uh, link on each one of these and see more of the what they're doing on their side of the house. So, um, you know, uh, that that's ama amazing to me to not only see the art here, but to be able to even follow the artists. Um, we did see the Moto Heart and the Abandoned Piece. Here we have the Snowy Owl in Flight. Um, by Kimberly Taylor. Wow. Uh, let's see here. Um, so, uh, Kimberly, uh, Claymore Vets is proud to highlight the amazing work of Kimberly Taylor Art. This is a 25 by 18 wide acrylic painting. Uh, she is a 100% disabled Army veteran with four boys. Uh, and we quote, I broke my back during a training exercise at 18 in the Army. <laughs> I am self. I am a self-taught artist living in Battle Creek, Michigan. I have a severe autistic son who loves to sit and work on his own creation right next to me. So my painting time brings me joy with not only painting but bonding time with my son. I've lived all over the world with the military and have gotten the experience of so many lovely cultures and people. I'm now home enjoying my retirement with my painting and working as a substitute teacher in the local school system. Yeah, her style is amazing. If, if you want to go on her page, um, it was so hard for me to pick uh, out of her submissions. I was like, oh, we have to do one. I, I want them all. <laughs> <laughs> He's really good. Oh, wow. Wow, this is, uh, it, it's, 
Yeah, and again, for those that, that see it here, if you go uh, to the auction page, you'll see it, all, the information for the pieces, and you'll also be able to see at the bottom the link to the artist and some of the other things they're doing. And even hearing kind of what she's done and how this brings her closer to her family and whatnot, again, it really just shows more behind the art of what it means. So it's not just a static piece. It's a piece that is bringing uh, amazing things here. Um, we got Domokan here in the comments saying, hey, Joe and Andy. So uh, we got people coming in and showing up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I think she might be one of the comedians that I just uh, that I just performed with. Oh, awesome. If that's me. If that's me. Say what's up. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, because sometimes we have like the little monikers on, on YouTube. So we'll stand by for a comment here uh, after she sees or hear, hears us. Uh, let's see. We have uh, Muse Argoni. Yep, she said yes. Uh, yes, you are correct, Joe. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> amen uh, to what Jesse has said. Uh, so many talented artists. Uh, Damo says that is me. Uh, so here we have a piece. Uh, let's see. Uh, by Ron. Let me pull up his. So Ron uh, Erickson. One of the many talented artists, uh, let me zoom in here so folks can get the full experience. Oops, there we go. Uh, one of the many talented artists that we are proud to highlight for Claymore Vets Silent Art Auction. Uh, he is the director of programming for Frontline Paper with Frontline Arts, PCNJ. This amazing piece was hand painted uh, leno cut print. 11 by 14 on handmade paper made out of recycled uniforms by Marine Corps veteran artist Ron Erickson. To follow his wow. art, you can find him at, at Ron Erickson Art. Um, and as well, that'll be here at the bottom uh, of the page. The, the, the wow. picture really does not do it justice. I have it here because I, I actually did a workshop with him a couple days ago. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, no. That, no, that is a whole... Oh. Hold, hold on now. Wait, 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 wait. There you go. It's amazing. Wow. And... He wow. created his own paper. This nonprofit. They actually use uniforms. They cut it up, and then they put it through a pulp machine, right? Mm -hmm. and make it into paper. This, this, this was uniform. Whoa. No, nah, that's right? amazing. And then we did workshop. Is is that the one that you broadcast at live, Maria? With you and the other gentleman? <laughs> I saw. I saw. I, I did see you guys doing that. I was just like, man, that's pretty nifty, making paper. Right. So they 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 do paper, and then I was like, hey, Marine, let's get creative here. And then we ended up making a sculpture. This is this used to be a uniform. That's and pretty good. <laughs> that's so cool. Right? Wow. Oh man. It's so, so great. So hopefully, when, well, now that the weather's going to get a little nicer, we're going to try to do workshops outside. But um, if you yeah. guys check them, they do a really, really great thing, too. Shout out to you, Joe. Eric sent you a message via Facebook, uh, as that's the page that I found for you. So a uh, little heads up there. Um, so that's awesome. And again, you having that there makes it look so much more real. The fact that it's like, oh, this was made paper. That's amazing. Right. Um, let's see, and we are coming over to Flowers uh, in a Glass by artist Ashley. Let me pull up she her. Mm -hmm. of a marine. Uh, let's she, Oh, wow. The, one of the youngest artists there, um, and she wanted to, to help us out. I think she's, I think at 19, maybe, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this is amazing. Um, and we have her page here on Instagram as well. So this is 18 by 10 gauche on paper created by artist Ashley Elizabeth. Um, I'm not going to put her last name. But this is... And how old is she? I think she's 19. If I'm not messed up. She's young. But what I love about this is... Um, uh, I, I agree with Rosemary's point here. Um, this is so cool. You need to do a Zoom workshop on some of the stuff. Because, again, um, I love the fact that you have artists who have been away from the arts for 25 years and are just coming back to it and then you have someone who's 19 
And I think that generational, you know, range uh, speaks volumes to just literally how this is, doesn't matter if you're old, young, in between. Uh, there's art and the ability to showcase, you know, your talent here uh, on so many ways. Uh, I love that. Wow. Let's see. And we have um, Summer Splendor by Miriam. Let me see if I have the He's right one. one of my tractors. She's a treasure. Shout out. <laughs> oh, okay. Yep. So, uh, Claymore Vets is extremely proud to highlight the amazing uh, photography of one of our treasurers. Uh, our treasurer, uh, Miriam uh, Charias. Summer Splendor is frame is a frame photograph that measures 14 and a half by 11 and a half. Amazing. And her information as well here can be found for her Instagram page of how to go ahead and get in contact um, with her. And when is the auction going to? The, the end date, I think, was what date? Uh... Sunday at midnight. Cinderella time. Oh. Did on, yeah. And again, we'll have the link, um, you know, this uh, the post that we have. Uh, but I think it's amazing just to be able to show that range uh, of art in different ways and being able to just have this, which I think is just amazing. Um, you know, at the end, I, there's not much more I can say and add to that. Um, MJ, this is a wonderful. Uh, this is so wonderful to support Marie and Claymore Vets and highlight these amazing artists. Uh, been on since six thirty. So I'll say good night. Um, so thank you for hanging out with us, MJ. Definitely appreciate you. Um, you know, hanging out and spending some time with us. Uh, because again, you know, it's just amazing to be able to do things like this. You know, uh, we literally had. You know, as of three weeks ago, the Marine Corps rapper comes on. We had a whole listening party. Then we went to country music. Now we have, you know, our, it's like, you know, it's just amazing to be able to see all these different things that are available and happening in our community and, and to be able to just showcase it, you know, to new audiences and collaborate, which is um, amazing. Like I said, this is just eye opening to see what you're doing, Maria, on your side, to be able to showcase folks like Joe and others and their art. Um, so, you know, like I said, I, I think it's amazing. Amy, what are your thoughts? I think it's great. I I would say to um, Maria's point about communication being key, and I we kind of touched a little bit on this last week with Jess, about sometimes it is, a, it is not what you say, but what you don't say verbally maybe but um like maria was saying expressing yourself through something like creating art is amazing um and it i i believe it i believe what she says about it you know when i was painting that <clears throat> we did that um this week this week for spring break and and when i was painting you know it was positive reflections not so much negative reflections and um that i took away with what you know sitting there and doing it and get kind of reminiscing and it's easy for us to be caught up in the negativity of us serving because of what some people have went through and um we we tend to focus more on that um but i think there's something to be said for just taking a step back and trying to be intentional on focusing on positive things that we did in the positive so I talk a lot about <clears throat> who I am now because of who I was, and that doesn't define who I'm going to be. But if it hadn't been for some of the stuff that I had gone through, I wouldn't be sitting here tonight for sure. And so I think there's something to be said through that healing process of becoming, you know, on that road and um, to being a survivor, kind of, if you will, in any shape, fashion or form. And so I really like that um, Maria said that. And I've talked a lot about um, like online I've, or on, on lives I've done with DP about, um, you know, my service connected disability of PTSD, MST. So what I want to say about tonight is that um, butterflies, um, I have two significant triggers and butterflies is a significant trigger for me. And it's something that I I work through and I still work through. But there was this weird calming when I saw the boots with the butterfly in a way that I've never kind of envisioned it. Because mm. when I looked at the boots, originally, 
I was like, I really like that. I really like the boots and the symbolization. As ironic as it sounds, I was in when you used to shine your wow. boots. And I shined my boots every day. And I took a lot of pride in my uniform and shining my boots. So to me, boots are very symbolic. And so when I saw the butterfly in the boots, it was just a weird, crazy feeling that kind of resonated with me. And I just really appreciate it. And it goes back to thinking that, you know, sometimes getting out of our own head and being able to embrace maybe that healing aspect and what that would look like. Because when I see that butterfly in those boots, it's a calming feeling for me. And so I appreciate mm -hmm. you. So I, I go back to, you know, everybody has a story and stories significantly impact people. And so I believe in telling your story and being completely vulnerable and open. And I think there's something to be said through that with healing. And so this is a perfect example of, you know, taking what somebody else did. That's a beautiful thing and thinking of it in a different, um, from a different perspective than a negative perspective. So I love that. And I thank you for that. Um, Maria, I think it's, it's awesome what you do. Joe, it's been awesome having you on. I think we do need to have some sort of little improv, <laughs> improv <laughs> here before we get off. But, you know, I think also I would say to remember to always check on your strong friends and those strong friends, it's okay to not be okay. And the hardest thing and the heaviest thing to pick up is a phone. Um, and so I had a friend to, um, this week who every day she posts, She's an amazing human being. She's so motivating. And she's been raising um, a little boy for two years in foster care. And they had their court date and they're going to rehome the little boy. And she talks about this, right? And she still goes on because she's so dedicated to people that have signed on this journey with her for fitness. And she still goes on. I text her to ask how she was doing. She said she wasn't okay. And, mm. but she doesn't want to reach out. She's used to always being the one that reaches out to everybody. And arguably, I think we all can be that, right? And so when I had told mm -hmm. her that thing, that phrase about the heaviest thing and the hardest thing to pick up is a phone, her response was, wow. You know, like to think about that. I think. All of us want to be there for somebody. All of us want to be able to support somebody. So it's okay to, to reach out for that support. If you didn't have a good week or you're not in a good space, it's okay to not be okay. And I would argue that it makes us feel more human when people do reach out to you and people are willing to tell your story and just being able to, whether it's sit in silence, whether it's join a Friday night live, whether it's to text, to email, you know, whatever it is that you need, um, be what you would tell somebody else to be. Be that person, you know, let somebody be the person that you want to be for somebody. And I think there's a lot to be said for providing this community content and compassion that DP is, you know, kind of amazing at. Um, DP is definitely a connector we've all talked about that and you know to is is dp doesn't like accolades he doesn't like people recognizing him but you know he's an amazing person that has this ability to connect so many people he accidentally stumbled across making veteran network and look at all the connections that he's made and all the lives that have been changed and the laughs that have been brought about all of this, I mean, Eric and Frank and Maria and Joe and all TMR, all these people have come together and we're building a whole new community. And is it gonna change the world tomorrow? Absolutely not, but it's changing the world today one by one, I think there's something to be said for that. And so I am thankful to be able to be a part of Friday Night Live and to, doesn't matter if you had a hard week, a bad day, um, I know for sure DP and Brian, we work together all week and we have many ups and downs um, through the week, trying to get through things and do things and 
And sometimes it's just about just sitting and talking about nothing or sitting on a Friday night that resets us for a week. So I love it. And I love that people have come to support Joe and Maria and what they're doing. It's awesome. Um, and I just really, I just love it. I'm feeling really good about everything tonight and this week. We had an awesome live with the women's panel. And um, my last closing piece would be to do what you love, <laughs> even if you're not good at it. So even if you can't sing, to go ahead and sing. Um, yeah, so thank you. I'm so glad that you guys have joined us and that I'm able to be a part of this with DP and Brian as well. And the rest of the team, Lisa's always here doing her comments and a lot of people behind the scenes. Um, I don't know if I give much credit to Jay, but I'll give credit give, to- Give it to his wife. <laughs> to his wife, Jess and Naali and Ronis, and there's just Bell's doing amazing things for the Veteran Network through FG Apparel. We couldn't do it without our assistants, um, our AAs, mine's particularly amazing, Carol. And so we're just, it's just a huge community um, that I think is is just amazing. And um, I, I think it's, it's I'm very thankful for it. So that is all I have. But and I do think that we should do an improv. For sure. But I will say, uh, you know, to just kind of validate for folks, um, you know, what Amy's shared, I, I want that just to set to sit for a second. Um, because one, I've always commended Amy to take the position, you know, to be rated for PTSD due to the military sexual trauma that she endured in service. Uh, it's one of those things you don't talk about. And for Amy to step up and say, you know, I'm here, right? I, I, I am a survivor. We did a series. Where we talked mm -hmm. about going from a victim to a survivor to being raided. Um, and for her to be able to stand up and, and, you know, hold that space for others, it helps. Um, but to be able to understand that for her, that butterfly is one of her triggers mm -hmm. tied to her military sexual trauma. You know, that's that's huge. Because, again, mm -hmm. you know, triggers are triggers, symptoms are symptoms. Uh, but when it comes to MST, that's a whole different, very delicate space that we don't really mm -hmm. talk a lot about. And for her to be able to find some healing and some solace into that, uh, Maria, through your art, um, mm -hmm. that's why it stands out. If you've ever noticed that we she always talk about those boots and the boots, it's like, well, okay, the boots. Like, no, 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 no. It's not the boots. It's what the boots did by virtue mm -hmm. of that. Because before the boot, to a degree, the butterfly piece it's a trigger and that's not mm -hmm. something that's like oh look how cute for her no it's a it's a trigger and we'll leave it at that mm -hmm. whereas now that art did something that you know went yep. beyond therapy went beyond words went beyond visualization went beyond beyond whatever and just that piece there just reset that whole conversation mm -hmm. for her and how she interpreted that so i really just wanted to double down on that one piece to the power of art to what you said mm -hmm. earlier maria which is art is yep. healing and literally by amy sharing that i can't think of a better example than a veteran who's standing up saying i am a survivor of military sexual trauma this to me is a trigger but now in context of your art i love what i'm looking at and that's mm -hmm. that just has to be highlighted because it's powerful yep. and i think it goes to being maybe maybe some of it is being a veteran too because you you resi you know veterans can relate to one another. It doesn't matter if you never ate an MRE or you have a a lot of MREs. You can still at some point relate to each other. And so to see that come from another veteran doing something like that is yeah it's it's, it's cool. Oh no! I, I don't know what was that. Sorry about that. That was my. Uh, so I got a I got a call on Facebook Messenger. And the ringtone is is a laugh track, so it's like the worst timing ever. Oh God, I'm sorry. No, that's no, that is awesome. Oh. Like literally, Maria, you were gonna say something. Oh, I man. wanted to thank Amy for for being so candid in, in your reflection on the piece. Um, and honestly, that is one of the, the things that I love the most about creating. I want to say that I always. Like, I, it's a surreal realism, right? I create my reality, but then when I put it out there, I leave it open-ended so that it speaks to the person, you know, uh, viewing it. And you telling me that story, it, was, it hit me, like, a lot because this was uh, a, from the exhibit. It was full metamorphosis. And it, the opposite for me, butterflies are like messengers of good, right? And 
but but also because a butterfly goes through such a traumatic and painful metamorphic get you it literally liquefies itself in the cocoon to be able to make itself into a butterfly right and even then they come out it has to wiggle all the liquid into her wings so she can fly right because she won't be able to if she doesn't like you know go through all the pre pain and pressure so i think there's such a symbolic thing to that because i feel like we as veterans have to you know come through all of that pressure and and i'm glad that it resonated with you in that way because that's what i was intending you know to, to do and then on friday night and how this is like such an awesome just to hang out like this like full disclosure i had a really rough week uh it's i started with like i had you know like an anxiety attack and this whole week it was like horrible and i even came close to being like hey guys i can't make it today but i was like no i gotta do it i gotta do it um and now like i feel better just talking to you guys and just hanging out you know and this is like thank you thank you for this because this is what we need you know just smoke pit mm -hmm. talk stuff <laughs> even though i've never smoked but you know that mm -hmm. so and to, to one of the things that Amy brought up that we don't highlight too much, um, this is really kind of the Veterans Network, you know, kind of ethos, right? Uh, we seek to create community to, you know, compassion and content. So the content we create, we want to create it with compassion to enable a community. And I've always said this, and I, I say, you know, it's kind of one of my monikers, but in a community, in a tribe, we have different needs. A community needs a supermarket, a hospital, it needs gyms, it needs all these different things to sustain life. And in our veteran network, in our veteran community, in our tribe, we need a variety of folks. We need the young, we need the old, we need the ones in between, we need those that may be wayward. Like all of that is part of our community um, and being able to look at art, have a laugh, have a conversation, listen to music, see what people are building, the nonprofits, all these things that are happening, you know, it's amazing to be able to do it because you know how it is, right? Like what we're trying to do here is just connect, you know, the pieces of people's amazing stories. And for some, it'd be like, well, you guys are too macro. You got to niche down and find your niche. I'm like, man, fuck a niche. It's a community of people that need shit and we have to connect it. So, hey, we'll build it slowly our way, but we have the ability to have different things because I understand some folks have to niche down and they're going to come at this from a comedic side or others come at it from that side. But when you have someone like the Marine Corps rapper who calls me up today and says, hey, I have an idea and I want to collaborate and I want to bring my musical resources to the table it's just like well first of all what in the heck <laughs> where the, you know what i mean like the universe you know to joe's point whatever your belief system is i think if we're acting in intention all these things begin to attract i'm big on that you know I, i'm big on the fact that you know we attract you know goodness right we attract the things that we need to support and you know people might say oh that's just talk and i've talked about this when it comes to like finances or resources but the fact is you know to the to the, re the those are tools right we need finances we need you know resources and stuff to be able to do more so our focus is not the bottom line like everything that we saw the swag shop those that don't know or may have not heard it Every shirt, and you know, we'll, we'll highlight this because again, if not, I'm sure that uh, I'm going to get something thrown at me here. Uh, but everything that happens over at Veterans Network Club, um, every shirt that is purchased, one is given away. So there is no proceeds wow. or profits to come our way. So literally, that's completely bootstrapped. Putting together a swag shop, if you buy a shirt, a homeless veteran gets a shirt. If you buy a, a sock, a homeless veteran gets a sock. And that's kind of what it is. You buy one, one goes away. So there is no, hey, we had a good month this month. I don't want it. That is not, that's not what this is about. It's about trying to do something different. And in that, some will say, well, why are you guys bootstrapping that stuff? That doesn't make any, any fiscal sense. That's the problem. Everybody keeps focusing on the wrong things. I think if you build it right, if you do it right, the right people will come around. And that's what this is, is happening now. When you see the Marine Corps rapper, when you see Maria, when you see Joe and all these individuals coming around and they're aligning to what we're doing. And folks will be like, man, you guys been doing this all the time. I'm like, we just all met. Literally, like Joe just popped in here from a set and we're over here <laughs> grooving and jamming and we're having a great time. And Maria had a tough week, but little did she know that Joe's coming in too to be able to kind of be her wingman. And, you know, maybe she wasn't feeling too spry, but guess what? 
we're coming at it. We're highlighting art. We're showing our people what's available, what's out there. But for us to be able to create things and even the swag shop, you know, all these things that we have that are being created, uh, they're also from a veteran owned and operated um, company. So minority veteran um, uh, operated and owned um, our own ecosystem of our own people. So I believe that coming into the intention, working together, the tools that we need will come to us. Right. We're putting out goodness. We're coming at this the right way. So all that we need to execute and be able to step out, that will come to us. I've always believed that. Um, and we've been doing this show. You know, Amy knows this. We've been doing Friday Night Live for what? Uh, going on three years now, almost <laughs> literally three years with a few veterans. And it was on Zoom. And it's like, hey, look, I'll just hang out with you because you got nothing to do. So guess what? I'll hang out with you. And then now we have a swag shop and now we have a website. And now we have a veterans network. And it was just a bunch of vets just trying to hold space for other vets. Um, so when we say something like, hey, if you like this, share it, go ahead and, you know, invite someone in. It might not be for everyone, but it is for someone. Um, it's not for, hey, the likes and the attention, because we don't want that. What we want to do is be able to tell and connect what Amy said to Maria's point. Because there's a power in Amy saying what she said, but there's a bigger power in Maria hearing that. And even if she doubted for just a second, it's like, no, that's what I needed to get back out there and put together something else. Because another piece you create is going to have that same impact. Like, we know we're doing it for the right reason, but like anything else, right? Like, you sit there and just give and you give and you give. And every so often you hear some feedback and you're like, oh, like, hey, Joe, that set tonight, that I needed that. You don't understand. I was this close. And it's just like, wait, what? I'm like, no, you don't understand. I was this close. That set, that thing, that text, that call, that thing you did for some can make the difference. And I think that's what's powerful about this. Um, so I really just am grateful uh, for the space that we hold and the fact that we are attracting uh, folks to us. Um, we have a few comments here. Mark says, uh, Brian, check your email. He sent you some uh, emails there. Uh, Eric, I'll bring it up here because if not, I'm sure someone will throw a book at me. Uh, so he said that stuff there must be another DP guy here. And he's talking about, I'm not sure who that is. <laughs> um, Eric is uh, happy to spend some time here with us. Uh, let me shoot it over to Brian. Yeah, appreciate it, DP. No, I, it's it's hard to expand on on uh, what Amy said, what uh, what's all been said tonight. But you know, the reality is, is in something that you said, Maria, that actually kind of clicked with me is you're talking about that when you're having that difficult day and you, and you get in to do that art, it creates a connection. Um, you know, because, you know, for somebody like me, you know, I go into a, a therapist's office and, and they're like, man, you got serious avoidance issues and serious, con you know, disconnection issues, you know. So, you know, walking out of the Army in, in 93, um, I steered clear of anything veteran related until um, until a buddy convinced me to, you know, to, to reach out to the VA in 2019. So for 26 years, I've avoided anything to do with veterans or veteran status or um, and even even today still feels awkward to call myself a veteran. Um, it, it's just one of those things that I, you know, you, you get ingrained in yourself for, for so long. Um, but having having this community that I had never seen before, I mean, I had never seen anything like a veteran community like this. Um, until connecting with DP and the team, and um, and being able to geek, be able to meet these great people like Joe and Maria and, and, and TMR, Eric, and, and just so many others that are coming across that we're, we're getting a chance to meet. Um, never in my wildest dreams would have ever expected anything like this, um, and it's just creating that community that everybody can come to. You know, I'm kind of like Eric when it comes to artistic ability. If I were to try to take a, a drawing into my therapist, they, I'm afraid that they would probably try to commit me right there. So, you know, there, there are certain forms of creativity. I'm still trying to define my outlet, but um, but being able to to absorb in um, uh, in you know that that creative art artistic ability that all of you guys have in all the various forms. Um, even for those of us who have that type of creativity challenges, it's still, a, uh, you know, still something that we can connect with. Um, so even if I can't translate my thoughts into something like that, 
um, you know, I think the elephants do probably a more creative painting than I would, but, um, <laughs> but you know, just being able to connect with that art and, and, and everything that you're doing, it's just being able to, to, to be part of the community and, and, and just see where, um, you know, listening to rap since, you know, the first time since the eighties, um, you know, and, and just different stuff like that. It's just things you just never would have uh, imagined. Uh, at least I would have imagined. So I'm just thankful um, for all of you guys. I'm thankful for DP for uh, creating the space here for everybody to get together and, um, you know, that we can play some small part and, you know, I'm happy to, to serve coffee to anybody. So I uh, just appreciate being here with you guys. No, thank you, brother. Um, Maria, we'll, we'll go to over to you. Yeah, that is the daggone truth. Um, we'll go to Maria, then we'll, then we'll, then we'll, then we'll close out, um, our, our final thoughts with Joe, um, and, you know, uh, a Amy has asked, I don't know about this whole on demand thing, but, you know, comedy on demand, that's, um, I don't want to put pressure on you, but, you know, Amy apparently wants to, to, to have you kind of close out with something positive, so we'll close out with Joe. That's what I do, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> Too, so. <laughs> over, over to you, over to you, Maria. For, uh, for any closing thoughts that you have for those out there live or watching on the replay. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think we all said it. Um, I'm very grateful for the fact that my service has afforded me to be able to come in contact with people like yours and like Amy said. I know we focus on on the negative stuff a lot, but yeah, we we, we have a lot for and. Um, you know, like like this cadre of, of people. So thank you guys for having us. And over to you, Joe. Before we go to Joe, I have to say real quickly, Jerry does not play games. He literally sent me his 214. So <laughs> Navy got out 73 as a 03. Uh, uh, Sir is uh, definitely an order. Got out as a lieutenant. Um, yep. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's a, he is correct um, on his date. So we can no longer uh, say much, but I will say this. Born in 48. Let that marinate. That man was born in 48. So. <laughs> wow, Jerry. It's, 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 oh, my God. We're going to have to start, a, like, a, we have to start like a fitness, skincare type of situ something because, man. Uh, but I, I got it, Jerry. You are definitely. What's uh, your secret? What's your secret, Jerry? <laughs> Apparently, Friday Night Lives. <laughs> yes. um, so, uh, definitely a safe space. So, uh, oh. Joe and Maria, so this is Jesse Melendez. Uh, this is Jay, Jose Melendez. Me and Jay actually go back about 20 years. Uh, I have my own stand up routine about the time his leg gave out, the time his credit card got declined. There's a whole history of 20 years of service together. So, you know, been there, done that. Uh, they're married. They're actually together. And the irony is uh, they're literally out hanging out right now and they're watching on their phones, which is hilarious to me. So we literally have her <laughs> on one side uh, having, <laughs> um, you know, wa watching and, uh, you know, tuning into what we're doing. And then on the other side, we have uh, the other uh, Melendez uh, family member, which we don't give too much time to. So they're literally, as you can see, you know, when we talk about it, like they're literally tuned in next to each other. <laughs> yes, when they're at home, they sit, they're both on their phones and they watch it on the big screen and they're both commenting and watching. It's, it it's, the, it's, it's the best. So, uh, Joe, over to you, my brother, for your closing thoughts uh, and something a little more positive uh, as we sure, wrap sure. it up. No, I... I uh... I can't. I couldn't say anything more. It, it's all been said. Um, uh, thank you, DP and, and Amy, for for having me. This was truly an honor. I had a I had a blast. A lot of real, real good, thought provoking stuff. You know, like it's um, it very much is like it's like scratching my brain where it itches. You know, to talk about this stuff and, and share these experiences and make those connections. Um, I, uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, what I do. You know, on stage, as I I make wisecracks, I you know I try to bring people into my uh, to to my my head and the way I see the world and and to see um, was it was it uh, was it Jay or Jerry the the gentleman that was born in forty eight Jerry 
Jerry, I mean, good Lord, man. I, I always tell people that uh, you see me now. I look at these pictures from myself when I was in the Marine Corps, and I'm like, damn, dude, you were hot. And now, <laughs> and the, the, the problem is now, I look like a guy that's willing to eat a donut somebody already bit into. You know what I mean? It's like not the, it's not the, it's not, it's not where, the same. Where, where is it? There he is. But uh, unbelievable. That, I just... Yeah. I guess I love pizza too much. I don't know. I just, good God, man. You talk about, you talk about MREs. I mean, I spent uh, five and a half years on active duty in the Marine Corps eating that garbage for the most part. And then, and Maria can attest to this, in the Marine Corps chow hall, I don't, there's not a nutritious thing in there. I mean, what, what, the Marine Corps, I think, runs on mozzarella sticks. Like, what are we doing? Um, so, I'm not, I mean, I'm not even kidding. Like, there's a vat of nacho cheese in the chow hall. I don't know what that's supposed to do for the, for our fighting readiness. But, um, but no, I, uh, I, I love doing, I love doing comedy. I'm, I'm happy to do it, uh, you know, sort of on demand. Um, you know, one of the things that's weird about being a, a stand up comedian is that, a lot of times, you know, out, out in the world, when people find that out, they'll say, oh, tell me a joke or, oh, make me laugh. And I'll say, well, if you were a chef and I met you in a parking lot, I wouldn't say pull a steak out of your pocket. You know what I mean? It's like, not the, it's a little bit, but I'm happy, but I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to do it. I, um, I'll give you an example. These, the virtual environment, uh, you know, normally one of the things I love about stand-up comedy is being out in front of people because it really is a rush. Uh, there's real stakes. Like it's scary being up in front of people. Um, but these virtual shows, it's it's not the same. Like I tell people, if regular stand-up comedy is like skydiving, doing these virtual shows is like putting on your parachute and jumping out of a parked car that's like in your own driveway. I mean, it's not, you know, like if, if this was a live show, I would definitely have pants on. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not, I don't have to... Um, I, I probably would have taken a shower at some point in the last week, right? I mean, I don't, um, I, you're, it's going to be a real stinky return to, uh, to real life people because 2020 and 2021 were the day, were the years, the daily shower died forever. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know where my deodorant is. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple, I'll give you a couple of these. Um, Let's see. So one of the things that I like, I'm a big movie fan. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I like movies. I love apocalypse movies, zombie movies. Right. But I swear to God, Hollywood pisses me off, man, because they don't get it right. Like if the next zombie apocalypse movie doesn't start with a toilet paper and yeast shortage, I'm out. Just <laughs> we know that's right. I mean, oh, God, we all uh, 2020 changed everything. It really did. Um but uh, I wish I had I wish I had my setup here because Amy, I'm terribly sorry about uh, about that the, the laugh track playing at the absolute worst time like in the history of, of comedy. Um, that that joke is part of it, or that that laugh track is part of a joke that I do where I talk about how uh, the pandemic has really given me time to to innovate with my comedy, you know, uh, and and you really can't you really can't stop innovating in this game, not even for a second. One of the biggest innovations that I found in stand-up comedy through the pandemic is something that I take away from uh, from sporting events. Like I'm a I'm a sports fan, and it's been bizarre the last few months to watch these live sporting events where like I can see there's nobody in the stands, but they're piping in this fake crowd noise. That's so disingenuous to me. Like, are the athletes even into it? Like, they know there's no. It's not actually people cheat. Does that give them a rush? Like, you got to be a real egomaniac to benefit from fake noise. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sorry, Amy. That's what. That's what went off uh, because I got on Facebook. Uh, uh, Facebook call, and when I hit decline, I accidentally hit the push for laughs button, which was right behind it. So that's one of the more embarrassing things I've ever been a part of in um, in performance art. Um, but uh, but I'll leave you I'll leave you guys with this. I uh, I'm a big fan of the um, uh, of the summer. You know the weather's getting warm, at least here in Maryland it is. Uh, I'm currently if you I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even attempt to put my foot up on camera because I'd break my back and fall over. But I'm wearing flip flops at the moment. I love wearing flip-flops, uh, but it's tough because they really are kind of like the, the ultimate sign of like 
of, of success or like you don't really care, like wearing flip flops makes it abundantly clear no matter what happens, I'm not running anywhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, that's one of the things I like. I feel like flip flops kind of make me feel like I'm really, you know, like I've made it. So, uh, <laughs> I hope you guys. I hope you guys. I mean, I I, I love doing this, man. I could go for the, I could go for another hour. So I hope that was um, that was good. Well, no, I, <laughs> that was hilarious. Then what? Say what, Maria? What? What'd you say, Maria? So when the apocalypse comes and you're wearing your flip flops, then what, Maria? I mean, Ma- Maria, you know, smoke them if you got them. Like I'm done at that point. <laughs> take me, take me now. <laughs> <laughs> Take me. I'm too old. I'm too fat, and frankly, I'm. I mean, I'm wearing pieces of leather strapped to my toes. I'm not. I'm not running. Whatever happens, I'm. You know, put up the Dukes and do a little Marine Corps martial arts. But um, <laughs> uh, bring, bring out that. Bring out that. Bring out that tan belt for everybody to see. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Jay said the chow hall is managed by the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> yeah, it's Not so, the Air Force it's one so is stupid. The Air Force is it good? Is it better? Yes, it's amazing. They have a menu. That's why I never had MREs. They, they have a menu and they have linen cloth on the table. Cloth, they have oh my flowers. god! I'm always gonna tell this story. Iraq, oh three, Doha. I would volunteer every freaking week to go to Doha because you guys had lobster. Every <laughs> and the freaking towel hall. Lobster. And I re- like, yes, yes. Well, and, and Maria, I- d- didn't you didn't you tell a story about a loofah? No, I don't think that was me. That, oh, uh, I the- thought- who, who, who was the loofah story? Someone had the loofah story. Had- Somebody that was deployed that would come back and their the Air Force person had a loofah in the shower and it would piss her off whenever she saw it. Mm-mm-mm. I can't remember who it was now. In the sh- in the shower, I like uh, our I mean our showers in Iraq were tents for the most part. I don't think it was a place to hang a loofah. Not the Air Force ones. The Amy, Amy no. did learn a few weeks ago what a water what a water buffalo was. Oh my god! It was not the uh, animal. Where the water comes out, it comes out tasting like a bunch, like a handful of pennies. It's disgusting. <laughs> that, that's when you get the true minerals. That's what it is. It's mineral water. You're yeah. it's, got, it's got iron, I, iron infused. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I will say this. I will copper. say this, guys. I'll, I'll leave you with this because I think you know we're talking about the difference in the services, and I think to me. The, the thing that highlights the difference in the services is very simple. It comes down to where you poop, right? <laughs> like in the Navy, in the, in the Navy, in the Navy, you poop on the head of a ship, right? Like in, in the Air Force, you, you poop in a nice marble toilet on a base somewhere, you know? With the bidet. In the Marine probably. Corps. With the bidet. In the, in the Marine Corps, you, you poop in a hole you dug, right? And then in the army, you poop in your pants until the Marines show up. You know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, uh, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. To all my army brothers and sisters, it's a joke. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, no. That no, that that is epic. Uh, you brought back a memory from Mark. He said, I would travel to Kadenia Air Base from North Oki <laughs> Marine Base just for the food. <laughs> it's so true, man. Uh, Jesse, who is going to come in live, she's a military spouse. Apparently, just eat those MREs and you can lose some weight. It might be my next diet trend. Um, <laughs> MREs, depending how you eat them, they may clog you, they may loosen you. It all depends. It's a fine balance. You may not go for a few days. You may go straight for a few days. <laughs> Uh, oh man! But um, but that that is definitely a great note to end on. Uh, for, and Joe, like I said, Joe Maria, obviously, you know, you guys are more than welcome, you know, to be and hanging out here with us. Joe definitely would love you to come back, of course. um, and, and just kind of really just you know give you some more time to be able to share and talk again for those that, you know that, that missed it. Joe literally had two other engagements. He says like I'm coming, and again it's funny because it's virtual, but it's like literally like I'm on the way. It's like wait a second, I'm in the same space. I'm just clicking out of one window to the next, uh, which is funny about what's happening. Running anywhere? No, 
<laughs> Admitted he's not running anywhere, but it's funny because it's again flip flops. Exactly. <laughs> But that's the irony of what technology has done for us. We literally <laughs> go from one meeting to a doctor's appointment to a Santa you know, routine, and you're in the same place. And you're like, what is life right now? Yeah. Like, this is yeah. awesome, yeah. and so the awesome. only people who are thriving in this space right now is veterans. It's like, this is amazing. I didn't want to leave the house any damn way. Yes. <laughs> now I don't have to sit there and be like, hey, hey, Joe, do you want to come out? Oh, man, I'd love to, man, but I got to work to get up early. Dude, it's a it's a virtual. Just turn on the computer. You don't have to go anywhere. Stop it. There's no excuses now. <laughs> the only excuse you have now is, oh, my internet is acting up, guys. I don't know what happened. Yes. <laughs> uh, so um, I think we we did forget to hit on something. Mm-hmm. Um, the um, VA is now offering uh, COVID vaccine uh, shots for. Um, uh, veterans and spouses actually mm -hmm. so um lisa actually did a blog on it um it talks a little bit about it but that's pretty big news for the, from the va i actually found out because i got a text message oh, wow. from the va that said if you wanted it to email them the date and time that worked best for you and they would put you on the schedule so that's awesome yeah, so if you guys head on over to uh, veteransnetwork.club, uh, you'll see here the information. We're building the site up. The site has been up for about a month now. Uh, for those that are new, we're actually going to have a section for those that are collaborating with us. So you'll be able to find Play More Vets. You'll be able to find Joe, all the people that we're collaborating and networking with to be able to highlight them. Uh, we have the About Us page. Our blog page is up. Our videos are up. We have the Marine Corps rapper bringing his musical side. So you'll start seeing some of that kind of uh, here as well. Um, Quick shout out, obviously, to the to, to the to the person here who deserves more credit, uh, which is my service dog. He is our chief yes. morale officer, uh, oh. so he has his own section in the about page. Uh, fun fact, uh, which I always make a point to uh, not not forget, but it just kind of escapes me. Time, uh, his name is Legend, but he actually is named after Chris Kyle. So if you read the bio, he actually the organization I got him through was a veteran organization uh, that works with veterans, MK9 as service dogs, and they actually reached out to the family and he, because of his names, because of his records and what he's done wow. and whatnot, they call him the legend, the man, the myth, and so forth. So legend is named after the legend, uh, which is Chris Kyle and the things that he has done in life. So that coordination is there. That's who legend, uh, my service dog is. And then we have some of our amazing uh, folks as well here that you'll see. So we're going to have a section, you know, this is the internal team that, again, they don't like to get too much noise, but Brian, you see uh -huh. here, Jay, um, you know, Ron is on, the, on, on his side with the swag shop, Nayeli, Lisa, Amy, our graphic and uh -huh. video guys, Chris and Mark as well. Um, and then we're going to build out another section for, you know, our partners and those supporting. Our swag shop is there as well, where you can find us on social media is here. Uh, so a lot of good information coming. The blog articles, we have people contributing information. Again, the last one being the law that was passed for the COVID-19. 19 shots regardless of where you sit whether or not you agree or don't it's information uh to be used as needed but again for veterans spouses and caregivers there may be those uh in the affected population uh who do need that and that is available to them so that's really what the focus there is about um but i really you know as usual as always I, i'm thankful for all of you holding space with us here again because we always say it but if it's one person whether live or on the replay they can find something out of this uh and if that makes a difference for them I, I think we've accomplished our goal at the end of the day so um I, i'm definitely grateful to all of you look forward to more collaborations for sure uh eric loved uh your piece there uh joe on your side of the house um Jay did, did, of course, this is why we don't let Jay anywhere. Um, he had to highlight that your drinking and shower water all had the same smell and taste. I'll leave it at that. Leave it to Jay to go ahead and, you know, take us out. Um, and also, um, April being the month of the military child, if you have kids that do amazing things or you know somebody um, that, you know, was a... Um, child of an active duty or reserve whatever we want to be able to highlight them if you're interested please send us a message and dp will do a one-on-one -on -one interview and kind of highlight say they are good singers you know we so can there's microphone that. yep we can highlight that and <laughs> <laughs> there you go brian um, <laughs> you know, uh, um 
it, I think it's it's cool to be able to do some stuff with kids too. To um, Joe, you had mentioned that your sister had passed of cancer. We had um, Ruby on a couple weeks ago, who is 10 years old here in Colorado Springs, and she actually um, shaved her head. She raised $1,700 for St. Baldrick's, and yep, and oh, she, wow. she yeah, she shaved her um, her head uh, for that cause. Amazing individual. Um, oh, so yeah, that was really cool. So yeah, if you guys um, know anybody or would like to um, have your children highlighted, uh, do a one-on-one -on -one interview with DP. And also I would say something to really stay tuned for and to watch out for <coughs> is um, the tables will be turned on DP. And I'm super excited about this. So DP spends a lot of time um, holding space for people and doing interviews and getting to know people and highlighting people, but isn't always, well, he's never good at highlighting himself or giving him credit. Um, and he does some amazing stuff and so many things. He's so diverse from the time that he was a kid until now that now um, Lisa has captured it and will be doing a blog on him and he'll be doing um, a one-on-one -on -one interview. So um, keep out, keep an eye out for that to get to know DP a little bit more. So that's always uh, um, exciting. So we're all looking forward to that as part of the team to even be able to get to know DP a little bit better. So looking forward to that. And here's his uh, avoidance factor. <laughs> Back to the month of the military child. <laughs> that's the power of controlling the controls. Oh, Amy, you're breaking up. I don't know what happened. It's the internet. I'm surprised. I'm surprised he didn't meet you, Amy. <laughs> no, I, I, it took it took everything in me to not like start to like fade her out like a ghost like this. <laughs> like, what is it? Is she fading? What happened here? Like, just a whole fa a whole Thanos thing. Um, but yes, yeah, so, uh, that, that's coming up. I'm actually recording with Anthony tomorrow, so that'll be coming up. Uh, he's gonna be kind of running the shop, and I'll be a guest there. Uh, but next month, though, we are doing a month for the military child and highlighting that so um, so a recording with my son uh, who's uh, going on 17 and one with Amy's son as well and I think part of that process is one of the things I want to build out for Veterans Network is our legacy um, and part of you know the next generation you know we do a lot of things we've been deployed we've missed times but what about our children? What about the next generation of those military brats, right? Like, oh, it's military brats. You guys just moved around a lot. Like, no, they're doing some amazing things. And I think to highlight that, uh, like my son, you know, he has a podcast. He's expressing himself. He's being creative. I don't know where he'd get, you know, that kind of crap from. But apparently he has a nift to for try to communicate <laughs> stuff. Um, you know, he's doing his thing, as is Amy's son and many others. And I think being able to highlight that. Uh, we had uh, Ruby, who we did an interview with, so I, I talked to her for a little bit and just highlighted her. And again, 10 years old with St. Baldrick, shaved her head, she raised damn near two, almost $2,000, which is ridiculous, uh, to be able to do that. And she's walking around, you know, with a baldy. And being able to highlight that, I think, really resounds with people because it's about the community. And the community includes those children that many of us, you know, were not around or deployed and were gone. So using at least our community and our network to help propel them i think that's definitely the next generation so that's something i want to build out there for sure yep. um but uh, yes see there now this is the only time i, I will agree with jay so great jay said he gets it from his creative side from his mama and that's <laughs> that's my story and i'm sticking to it um tomorrow we have um part two of um uh, frank's special that we did uh, sound off coming at eight o'clock. Frank's uh, crayons ready to eat. We have part one this week. Tomorrow part two airs. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely tune in for that. But amazing things happening. Stay tuned. You know, like, share, and comment, um, and follow us. But again, Maria, Joe, Brian, and Amy. You know, I appreciate you guys holding space. Joe, like I said, you had to run across the interwebs to get here doing so many things. <laughs> I'm so sweaty. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came in he's just like oh, i need a water jug oh, oh. i drink three bottles of water i don't know if you saw that <laughs> the worst part is you you have you have to go freaking hit the head so as we wrap it up here you know uh we'll bring back uh baby brian um in like fashion because that's uh kind of what we like to do here so we're gonna wake up little baby brian and we will go out. And that's 
And as he's doing that, uh, one one quick yeah. final note. Look at the next, no, week, like fri- next week's Friday Night Live is an encore. So we won't be live next Friday night. Um, so just a okay. little announcement for, for everybody. Um, just uh, watch for a replay, maybe some best of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So little baby Brian taking us out. Joe, Joe is bringing the moves. This is ridiculous. Goodness yeah, gracious. Right. Look at those shoulders. Joe's like, cover my face. Cover my shoulders. I can't keep this up too long.